などの電気機器類や音が出ないよう設定し通話はご遠慮くださいますようお願い申し上げます We request passengers to set electronic devices such as mobile phones to silent mode and to refrain from making phone calls Thank you for your cooperation Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm here today with Stan from Random Tens.、Um, and of course, as you've seen by now, we, you, you've all seen that the, we've collaborated recently in real life, off, off screens,、uh, to make the Donkey Kong 64 review, the, the infamous Donkey Kong 64 review, where we, we met up、uh, in Canada and then went to Japan and had the trip of a lifetime, as it were. And、um, yeah, no, so that, that all happened recently, and I figured that we should do a discussion video to.、Um, Not only cap it off、uh, how we started with discussion videos themselves, but also to just explain how it all came together, what happened, and、uh, how, how the trip was in general. So, yeah.、Uh, wow, Roy.、Um, what a beautiful intro that you've given yeah. me. Yeah.、Um, thank you for having me on this very special podcast.、Uh, yeah, no, I love you, it. I mean, Listen every you do、week. owe me ever since you know, letting me come on your trip.、Uh, <laughs> Wow. And all that that entailed. Yeah, so no, I, I think it's funny because I think、um, if you just watch the video, it very much seems like, oh wow, you met up with Roy、uh, in Tokyo, in Japan, where the, the truth of the matter is you actually stayed at my apartment first、uh, in、yes. Canada for like a night, and then we went to Tokyo.、Uh, we flew out together so that it would be you know, easier,、uh, the flying、yeah. at least.、Uh, and then. You actually came back and stayed for a few days as well、uh, while recovering from the awful, awful jet lag. So,、uh, yeah, I think, I think a lot of people would just assume probably that Tokyo was like the end all be all, which honestly would have been just fine in and of itself. But、mm -hmm. uh, it was actually even more than that. Though we didn't really record much or take much photo or content、uh, when it came to the Canada stuff. But、yeah. you were here. You actually were here、yeah. in this fictional、uh, country I, that I... you like to. Make fun of, but、um, I saw milk bags, I saw, I saw poutine, I ate poutine, I ate ketchup chips. It was horrendous. It was as bad as it sounds. We got you a giant、uh, thing of maple syrup as well. That is true. You did. You did indeed.、Uh, I've not, I've not tried, that, tried that bad boy yet, but you know, I was very grateful for that as well.、Um, but yeah, so basically, the, this whole thing started back in, I'd say, like late May, maybe early June, but I'm pretty sure it was around that May period at the end.、Um, You had basically shot me a few messages, been like, hey, Roy, if you're curious at all,、um, I'm interested in, like, if you, if you want to join the trip, you feel free to, you know, maybe, maybe that could happen. Maybe that's one that we, we could work out. And I'd always, like, dismiss him, be like, oh, yeah, fun, funny story, bro. That's a cool, cool story, bro. But、um, I didn't, like, genuinely believe you until, like, mid or late June. And then we started talking about it more seriously. And then, of course, the whole DK thing came into play around July. And then it was all finalized. Very early August, maybe late July. And、um, yeah, and ever since then it was just planning, and then the trip obviously happened in late October through early November. So, yeah, it, it actually、uh, was born as a Christmas gift for、uh, my, my girlfriend, now fiance, Nadia,、uh, last year, like in, at the end of 2017. We were supposed to go in May、uh, of, of like this year for kind of her graduation、uh, of, of college and university, but Unfortunately, what happened is, well, not unfortunately, but I, I got a job downtown in the city, and that、uh, I just couldn't take the time off. I had to, like, you know, pay my dues, as it were.、Uh, and so the trip kept kind of getting postponed and postponed, but we knew it would probably be sometime between September,、um, but before December, somewhere in that sweet spot, because Tokyo is actually fairly warm、uh, during that time,、uh, surprisingly. Like, when we were there, as you just said, it was late October, early November. And、uh, it was actually like 20 degrees and very beautiful out pretty much the entire、yeah. time we were there.、Uh, you, you would sweat. Like some, there were some days yeah, you definitely no, was... had to be in like t shirts.、Uh, so, yeah. yeah.、Um, but yeah, so originally it was just going to be the two of us.、Uh, and then I would say around March, April of this year, 
uh, I started talking to uh, my friend Rob um, about the trip and saying like, hey man, like, you know, Tokyo's really cool and he was looking up stuff online and really wanted to go. So I said, hey, like, if, if you can make it work, uh, we should go. So he actually got on board with it um, and I was also trying to convince my other friend, uh, Neon at the time, to go as well, but uh, it never worked out with him. But Rob was almost a go uh, to the point where we even booked off time together and then something happened where my time off request wasn't accepted. And anyway, so long story short, it just didn't work out. Eventually, I rebooked for a later week. Uh, then he couldn't go, and it just was kind of a mess. But in that interim, uh, or in that absence, we you know, planned a trip essentially for like three people. Uh, and now all of a sudden, you know, we're back down to two, which wasn't a bad thing. Like, it could have just been like a romantic trip. But in my opinion, Tokyo is not like an especially romantic city it's definitely more of like a fun uh exciting city you know they call it like that well actually have at least like the electric city um for a reason and so anyway long story short i started kind of just throwing out to to you know a few closer friends of mine including again uh brett aka neon like hey you want like it's open i asked my brother i asked him uh, and i asked you basically and uh though the other two said they couldn't because of work and other things but uh you being, you know, freshly graduated, uh, we're in kind of a, a, a time and place where it actually could could work out and also give you some, like, real-life experience, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, luckily it all kind of came together. It's surprising, like, honestly, it's still kind of a, a shock to me even thinking about it now, how, I mean, yeah, we've known each other for, you know, over four years at this point, but mm -hmm. still, we've never met in person before, whether it's at a con or anything. And so to, like, the first time really have it happen with this whole giant trip in place uh kind of crazy yeah no it's 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 crazy that like like what, coming back to me was like the real processing moment it was like a real system shock where like i was like oh wow that actually like happened that's crazy that one we met up at all but two that it was like in this giant trip and like being roommates for like essentially two weeks yeah um in this like yeah in, in a foreign country and flying on like long flights and everything um as well and it was uh it was it was crazy i think it was, honestly i think it like worked out amazingly of course but it was definitely just like it's insane when you think back on it and that it happened at all and when you're not in it if that makes sense like when i was in it i didn't really give it much thought but right. afterwards I, was, I realized like just how insane it kind of all was yeah well because it, it's really hard to appreciate moments when you're in them of course uh mm -hmm. and what might have seemed e extraordinary might now seem just, you know, very ordinary uh, when you're, like, kind of in it and it's just, like, you know, you, you get used to it. But, uh, yeah. no, it was really, really crazy, of course. And then there was the secondary thought, which was, like, hey, while we're doing this, we should probably finally record something for the DK64 review. Because, like, yeah. you know, I think one of your biggest struggles with it was just it never felt like it had... It, it was earned, essentially. Like... It was this mm -hmm. thing that was, you know, over three years in the making and all these memes and jokes, and it became kind of a part of your online identity, I think, in a way. Yeah. And so, There's no like, way to live up to it. And exactly. Put it out to, there to and make have it something work. that really lived up to the hype almost would have been impossible. And so, like, after this trip was kind of in place for, you know, just personal reasons, it then started to make sense uh, for. I mean, not business, but but definitely, you know, internet business, I guess. Yeah. Reasons like YouTube. Yeah, YouTube reasons exactly. Um, no, yeah, and it was definitely, um, I definitely, I'm glad that it worked out and that the video happened and everything, but, like, as you said, there's no, I feel like there's really no other way that I could have made it and have it live it up, essentially, um, and I feel like, especially the way that I dropped it as well helped give the, give the, uh, moment its impact of, like, making it look like Flight Simulator or something boring. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely, no, I, I think that's... Dropping out of the blue and everything. That's very true, and, yeah. uh, I think it turned out phenomenal. Uh, the reception so far, it's only been live at this point for like two, two and a half hours or something, mm -hmm. but uh, it's been very warmly received, especially by like the diehard, uh, you know, Roy heads, whatever you call <laughs> the, the the ex legionnaires. I don't know, but um, <laughs> it's yeah, no, it, it's went over well, and like the trip also just in general, like it's actually funny because now we're kind of gonna like look back on the trip a lot through the lens of this video, but realistically, we kind of just did everything with this video on like. A random Sunday towards the very end yeah. of the trip like the actual trip itself was like a thousand times more insane and yeah bonkers it encompassed than... so much more than 
just what this video was, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it was a full-on collaboration, too. Like, we kind of spitballed and, and wrote this idea, at least, together. You definitely had to execute it and, like, make mm -hmm. something real, but a lot of it, the dialogue, at least, ended up being improv improvisational um, yeah. for the video, uh, especially the final <laughs> scene uh, in the park, oh, which God. I think people watching could probably even tell that, like, Hmm, they maybe didn't have a lot of time to like take multiple angles and make it like super cinematic. And yeah, that is like that's that's the understatement of the year because Tokyo yeah. is always busy. There's people everywhere. Like it's such a dense city, uh, full of full of human beings that like to find a space in a park that we could like get away and just like film something without having people walk by. A cat walked by at one point, like into the <laughs> shot. Like it was really difficult I think we to took even it, get like, that. Eight, nine times. Like yeah, and of we course we so were kind of dumb and filmed the part that we needed the sunlight for at the very end of the day so like yeah. we were also limited that way and we should have like in hindsight i think that's a scene we probably could have like cheated a bit and and filmed that specific scene in toronto uh yeah, no, at a park sure. that i'm like familiar with on like a, a, a you know thursday morning when there's like no one there everyone's at work because you know we had a few days off uh post trip mm -hmm. to like recover before i had to go back to work and you were still yeah. here so that would have made sense, but it didn't work out. But I think it still turned out pretty well, all things considered, that that was, like, purely yeah. improv... I can't say the word, but yeah. Improvisational. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, no, the trip was crazy. Uh, I don't know if you, like, want to talk about some of your favorite memories from the trip or what you learned or what the first meeting was like or any of that stuff, but uh, I'd the, love to uh, hear. Yeah, no, we could go over the first meeting uh, as the first thing, I guess, because that is what happened first. Sure. Um but yeah, no, so I remember before we were like having a bit of a, a debacle of like, do we film this or do we not? Because it's like, it's, it'd be kind of awkward to have like a camera shoved in our face where I was like, hey, what's up, man? And you go for the handshake, but you're like holding the camera to film it. Um, but I think we usually end up like just film with your iPhone and sense the situation. I'm very glad that in the end that you did film it because it came out as like a great moment um, and it didn't really ruin it at all. Uh, but yeah, no, so, so we met up and there's obviously that clip that people have probably seen by now in the airport where I'm like, yeah, I'm a legend, I'm tall, and you're like, what's up? Uh, and so, that was, like, obviously, while well, hype still, but, like, once we started, like, actually talking to each other and hanging out, it was weird, I feel like, at first, for, like, the first, like, 20 minutes or so, it was, like, this not really adjustment, just, like, feeling out the situation, but I feel like right after that, at least for me, I just kind of snapped back into, like, you know, yeah. how, how we are on, on the internet. It just took, like, 20 minutes, and then I was, in, I was, I was like back to normal if that makes sense yes no and, um, I, I i agree with that completely it was very surreal um the first two hours for me i would say i think <laughs> right up until like getting back here you dropping your stuff off and then it was like halfway on uh on our walk to get poutine i think mm -hmm. which yeah roy tried poutine for the first time as well <laughs> uh, but yeah uh it was halfway like on that walk where i just finally like let all the all the like defenses down and was just like mm -hmm. like you said like it, it felt very natural and old hat again um mm -hmm. but it's funny too because i think what really freaked me out and i can still hear it in that video of like when i'm like it's the trip of a lifetime and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah the enthusiasm and excitement and nervousness like all in your voice i think really shine and so like to me in that moment like you sounded so much younger than than you have <laughs> on the internet and and uh in in like just general for the last like you know since your voice like really dropped um, yeah and i was not expecting that like that kind of threw me off because one you were taller than i expected but also yeah like like your voice was like a lot higher but it turned out it wasn't really higher it was just like the anxiety and like you know uh, yeah yeah like that the nerves were there and obviously kind of like shining through a bit but uh, yeah. yeah, other other than that though, like it, like you said, it, it was pretty quick. Uh, we played Smash Bros. We ate poutine. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Oh, you, God. you can't you can't skip past the Smash Bros. Where I just absolutely destroyed you, and even you in the end were like, "You beat me. You're better than me. What can I say?" Yeah, it. Well, You're the best player yeah, since, since Christ defense, himself. I, I believe it was, you know, it was basically all right. I won a few games. You won a few games, and then it was like I I said, and it was my it was my claim. I said. We'll play one more game, like just go as serious as you can. The winner wins the whole the whole thing. You're the like the better Smash player, and you agreed, and you did beat me. You did beat me. I, I made a really dumb I, mistake I early on, Stan and, and I never got past it, and I'm still living with the nightmares uh, to John's. this day. 
So yeah. Oh my goodness. You're Roy. Oh, I've never been more proud in my Roy life. Roy is a beast, and you did beat me in Smash Bros. And yeah. also height. So there you go. <laughs> you happy? You happy? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, the height thing was um was 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 not that weird at least for me because like for me I never really think like or, or feel that tall if that makes sense I just right. like am the way I am and like even looking on camera and stuff I'm like oh I guess I'm tall yeah like that's always how I feel so for me like even in the moment and stuff it's like yeah I didn't really feel taller if that makes sense it's weird yeah I mean um, I, n I never like the thing is like again at first I definitely felt like oh wow he's much taller but like by other than the DK costume because it just really accentuated your like <laughs> height and stature among like a whole the yeah. you know, the tiny like citizens of Tokyo. It was it was really <laughs> funny. But other than that moment, like and there like meeting you for the first time, yeah, the height thing actually didn't really come into play unless it was for like jokes on camera and stuff. Yeah. Um. In in actuality, it it weirdly enough didn't like. I never felt like weird or or, or intimidated by it or anything. It just it like you said, it felt kind of natural after a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, we couldn't unfortunately though uh, catch up too hard that first night because we had to be off super early for our flights uh, mm -hmm. the, the next morning. Uh, so we went to the airport, which is actually like pretty close to my house, which was nice. We got to walk there, um, leave the cold behind, um, and we were able to like check in early, get on our flight early. There was no issues with customs, or there wasn't really even customs in the first one. But you know yeah, what well, I mean. Well, we went to Montreal, yeah. Yeah, we went to Montreal, and then we waited in Montreal for a while. Uh, and then we were on our way, essentially. Yeah, we just flew for 13 hours to Japan. How'd you find the flight? Um, I think I even said it in like in the video that you're making, um, where you're like, "What's what was the best part of the day when we landed?" And I was like, "I think the flight was the best part." I think, uh, in retrospect, what I said was wrong, but I definitely think that the flight was a lot easier than I'd been envisioning. Like, for me, I was always imagining for like the months on end before right. the trip that the hardest part was going to be the flight, so I like over prepared for it. Yeah, and I I used like maybe ten percent of the stuff that I prepared and like brought. I only pl I literally didn't even use my switch at all. Um, yeah, well, I just, think it, I touched Minecraft for like five seconds and that was it. It becomes clunky, right? Because yeah, it becomes clunky. You're right. You end up just kind of having to use the like airport entertainment tablet thing mm -hmm. because yeah, if you like trying to set like I was trying to play Undertale on my switch and. I just couldn't really get into it. One, because of excitement, but obviously, too, yeah, just because like there wasn't enough space really to uh, to feel like I was I was enjoying it. I guess I don't know. Like, yeah. Um. So it was the same with movies. Like, you couldn't get into good movies. You had to watch like sub yes. not subpar movies, but like not A tier movies. Like, I went to watch um, and so did you. Uh, sorry, not sorry to bother you, but neither of us could really get into it because it was like. Like we only got like thirty or so minutes yeah. in because it was it wasn't was, the, like, the right too setting. much to watch on a plane. Of Whereas. A crappy JoJo's Bizarre Adventure movie that we were able to make fun of <laughs> was the perfect two-hour yeah. time killer. Roy got uh, indoctrined into the <laughs> into the JoJo's universe via the live-action movie of Part <laughs> Four, which is of course the best way to start. But yeah, and I, I didn't know anything it was about it. It was crazy. Yeah, the flight was good. It, um, it, it worked, but uh, the the post-flight, on the other hand, oh goodness, uh, between the flight and the hotel, after we'd been awake for you know roughly around somewhere between 24 and 28 hours, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, with you know the, so the time zone is completely different now we're we're not really used to it and then uh we get lost because yeah. they dropped us somewhere that so we had guidelines how to get to our airbnb um and we even <laughs> had like pictures printed like we were, i was gonna we say good. heavy quotations around guidelines because it was like it was like an easy, it was laid out like kind of like a scavenger hunt well there were, were like... there, there were directions too like worded directions as well but mm -hmm. the problem was they started from the train station and we got dropped off at a random hotel near the train station but not at right. it so we're starting and i needed to get to the train station but we kind of got dropped off in the countryside a bit mm -hmm. um a little bit further so when we eventually found the trains and stuff then we were good but just like getting to the train it took a long time we ended up having to use some of your luckily you had some data because you'd bought yep. a plan previously so we used your internet, but then the the app took us the complete wrong way. So then we had to backtrack, and then Nadia's nose started gushing blood because like the plane just messed with her. Like something must have popped yeah. or dried her out or something. So she's gushing blood. She's really not like like I don't want to say strong enough, but like she she's just not like tough enough at that point being up that late to carry these giant suitcases, which she admittedly did pack herself. So, you know, she she, she picked her own poison essentially, but 
Yeah, that, but and then like, the blood, you have to and imagine. The tissues, and, and then, on top of it, which like made me the complete bad guy, is your phone that I was using to get us to the place was like 10% battery when her nose started <laughs> bleeding, and if it ran out, I don't know what we would have done. Like, like yeah. we would have had, I guess we would have had to hail a cab and just like bank on it, but like, we were in the middle of nowhere, we, we really had no idea where we were at one point, and so I'm just like, we gotta hurry, she's like, I gotta stop, I gotta like, go to the bathroom, take care of this, I'm like, you gotta just use something and cover your nose, cause like, I, we gotta get there before this phone dies. It was a mess, like, like just straight up, yeah. uh, mistakes were made, to be honest, in hindsight, I think the better move would have been, honestly, uh, just like, you know, stopping at a bathroom, but we didn't even know where we were, we didn't even know where bathrooms were, and it was such a long day, and I just wanted to get there before the phone died. Yeah. But uh, in hindsight, yeah, we probably should have stopped at a bathroom. If the phone dies, then, like I said, we take a cab, pay a little extra money, and it, it probably would have worked out. But you're not thinking in, in that moment, right? It's like pure adrenaline. Uh, you're going on nothing but, like, just your spirit at that point. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, but... At least for me, too, like, um, I know you'd been there before to Tokyo, but at least for, like, me and, um... It was, like, it was like the weirdest moment to have culture shock, because, like... I was having like the awestruck version while we were driving through the city like oh look yeah. at this this is so beautiful but then it's like the real version of like oh I'm somewhere where I don't speak the language right and I don't know where left I don't know left from right I don't know up from down and we're stuck and we have no way to get back so like and it's dark it was, like, out that, uh, and it's dark out and like all of it layered together just like did not make for the most clear thinking um, yeah. strategies if that makes sense but we did make it and we grabbed some ramen that night yes yes and it was I tried okay. ramen for the first time it was not the best we, ramen I mean, I, I liked it a lot, but I know you're, uh... Okay, but very compare it to the ones you had towards the end of the trip. Which, is, ironically, like, we went... The first place was, like, a very local place, and a place you would expect to be better. Yeah. The best ramen in Tokyo, in my opinion, that I had was, like, this, like, food courty cafeteria place. We literally went back there our last night to try it... To, to, not to try it, to have it again, because yeah. that's how good it was. Like, it was the... It, I don't, I, it was the... It was the stuff of dreams. The stuff of legends. It was amazing. Oh my goodness, I love that ramen. But yeah, no, you are right. It was by those by those two standards. It was uh, it was not great, but at least for me, the first time I loved it. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but anyway, yeah, so we made so it then, back. So then we basically went to bed. Yeah, like we and were we just exhausted. Crashed. It's kind of a miracle that you guys got me out of the house uh, to have ramen that night. Like yeah, because I was I well, was I remember. So um, yeah, I remember. Like we were like, we we're like we we're, we're also exhausted, but we're also like we're gonna like be famished in like a few hours, and we are yeah. now. And you were like, we should just sleep, we should just sleep, and, like, um... I'm glad we didn't, but... Yeah, no, but, like, it was, like, I understood why, because, like, there's also the side of me that was, like, I just want to go to bed right now, that bed looks so comfortable, yeah. I haven't slept in, like, ten million years, so... Well, the, the, the bit, well, I also, like, when the adrenaline of, like, you know, the, the bickering and getting there and the fear of, like, maybe not making it safely mm -hmm. to our apartment, like, when that all, like, wore off and we could finally relax... Like, the lack of eating and all the stress and the sweating. Like, my, like you remember, my shirt was, like, soaked. Yeah. Like, I was wearing, yeah. like, a white... Well, it was, yeah, like, you were wearing, like, a hoodie. Like, you were wearing a sweater. Yeah, it was and, really uh, dumb. And so was I, and Nad was wearing something as well that was, like, heavy. And we landed in Japan, expecting to be at least a little crisp, but it was, like, humid and, um, it was, it was, like, it was honestly, like summer weather. It was, like, stinky, humid out. Yeah. Yeah, that night. And, yeah, so I, like, my, like, my shirt was, I just, like... I was just done, but yeah, and then I started getting dizzy, and I was like, "Yeah, I shouldn't go out right now because I might like faint." Uh, yeah, it, it, it was bad, but we made it, and we went to bed. Yeah, we got a good night's sleep, and then what did we do then the we next woke day? Up at like, we woke up at like five a.m. Yeah, all of us yeah. like like likely we were synced up on the same clock. Yeah, and uh, watched some Pokemon show that was on TV yeah. for a long time until the shops opened. Pokedenchi um, or Pokedenchi or something. Anyway, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was um, cool. We then just decided to explore the city a bit, go to the Sunshine City Mall, Pokemon Center, and all that. Yep. Um, you got a cool hat. Oh, I got a, I got a, I got a cool hat. It's like a Rayquaza, Rayquaza, Rayquaza um, it's like Japanese style art work of Rayquaza, and I got a few pins as well to put in the hat. Uh, I love that hat. Was, I think it's a good choice on getting it. Yeah. And then we um, stumbled into like the Halloween thing, randomly. Like. Oh parade. God! Right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah. Literally, we're walking around this mall, and, like, there's this, like, out outdoors area that's really nice. And, literally, we stumble, while, like, trying to find a Starbucks, we stumble into this, like, cosplay Halloween central celebration where, like, it's literally, I think it's no exaggeration to say, like, hundreds of people. Um, oh, yeah. 
like, dressed up. Like professional like news stations Prof and yeah. videographers and stuff. Like, yeah, it's, it's a big event, I guess. It was a huge event. Everyone there was like dressed up as something. Some costumes were incredibly impressive. My favorite was still the guy who had like the paper on the side of his head that made yeah. him look like a manga character. Yeah, that, was that guy was awesome. But yeah, and like there um, were people who like you know obviously planned their 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 costumes together. Yeah. So you had like the group of like My Hero Academia, the group of like Dragon Ball people, uh, the group of like uh, Fate Grand Order and Stay Night and mm -hmm. all all that stuff, the Fate series, uh, and like a group of just like random, I guess like I think they were just like off brand generic witches, but all of them were like a different color, mm -hmm. so they were kind of like um, Sailor Scout witch. Like it was anyway, it was cool. Lots and lots of like great costumes. There was that giant Pikachu. Um, oh, right. It was really cool. It, it was it, yeah, like it was it's one of those things where it's like we didn't plan for it. We we never saw it coming, and it kind of blew our minds because of that. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it was super sick. Uh, and then after that, it was surreal. We went to yeah. your favorite place. What the Owl Cafe? Yeah. Oh, the place. That place was that place was interesting. Um, I thought they'd have food first of all, so that was. A oh yeah, that's right. We literally went to the Owl Cafe. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, how could any of us have thought that they had food? But we all thought they had food. We went, we went there for lunch. Well, I um, assumed it'd be like the Penguin Cafe or Penguin Bar oh, or whatever. Yeah. Where I it was like the cool. owls would be behind like a glass and you get to like feed them mm -hmm. when it's like non-eating time. And then yeah. you like eat at your table. But no, it was literally, it, was, it should have just been like an owl park. Like, yeah. And um, like we, we get there and when they have us like sanitize our hands and stuff. And we walk in, and they literally just have, like, a bunch of owls. Um, yeah. Some some are free, but most of them are, like, at least tethered somewhere. Um, but even with the tethers, like, a lot of them can, like, oh, yeah. get a buzz. There's a lot of range. There's yes. a lot of slack on the tether. And there's a lot of owls. Like, literally, there's so many times where like, I'd look at something, I'd be like, oh, that's decoration. That's cute owl decoration. And then Ted would move and look at me. I'd be like, oh, oh. <laughs> and there's this one guy. Um, and he he had, like, these big eyes, and he was, like, high up. And he, he I think he was free because he kept flying around and stuff. Yeah. And at one point, May I was May filming Chan. him, and he, yeah, and he just, he just flew right over my head, and I, he, I, I had to duck. He, <laughs> yeah, he, he almost took swoop. Roy out. He almost took me out. It was, I swear side, to God, it was, a, it, was a, it was an attempt on my life. I did not appreciate it. Um, but, yeah. There was a guy who went after you, too, right? Like, yeah, a little bit? But he yeah. was, uh, he was on the ground. Yeah, he just, like, um, what was it? He just put his feathers up to make himself look huge. And hissing. He's freaking out about you. Yeah. And hissing, right. Yeah, I was, that, it, was, that was actually, like... It, it sucks, too, because that was, like, right when we got there, too. So it, like, kind of set up my, like, my, like, anxiety to, like, the yeah. max. Because then I'm, like, oh, like, these owls. I think it was my camera. Something in the camera, the reflection, maybe the lens or something had really tricked, like, had freaked like this that. owl out. Because Nad yeah. could get close to him. And you could even get kind of close to him and it'd be okay. As soon as I went with either of you guys towards him, he hated me. So, I mean, it yeah. could have been, I guess, like, maybe I stunk or something. But, um... <laughs> I honestly think it was because I, I had a pretty big, like, camera rig on me. Yeah. And like, with, like, a tripod and a boom mic. And, like, so I, I think it had something to do with something on, on that rig. Mm -hmm. But um, the good news is, obviously, uh, it all worked out. None of us died from owls. And uh, then we went back to wait for Rob, who yeah. I originally said was supposed to come on the trip. And then he didn't. And then he was able to get some time off. So he actually met us there. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the first day that we, we were staying there after just like he had a horrendous travel story that I'm not going to oh, get geez. into here but it involves him having to travel to five different countries uh, yeah. and also or, and three continents uh, as well as um, one of his airlines going bankrupt all in the span of like 36 hours to get to Tokyo <laughs> like it's insane but yeah it was, um, it was a crazy story yeah but I, I, I but know yeah. he wouldn't really want us to like discuss him yeah, too much so yeah. so we won't but um it was fun though like he showed up and we went to like a nice restaurant and you know he was game was nice which Italian was like the craziest place. thing after all that he was game for like everything yeah um yeah he honestly it was hilarious because like we you me and dad were like jet lagging we were like like we were obviously we were, we were more energized than the day before yeah but we were like definitely had that like tiredness about us yes and um ironically i think like for for a good chunk of the night he was the one who's mo most energized yeah like he was like ready it was crazy yeah he came in ready and um we were like a little a little zombie-ish um, no from, it was really fun our, our but travels. yeah so we had a nice meal um mm -hmm. and then basically like just geared up for the next day which was going to be our first like we're traveling we're doing some like real crazy stuff today mm -hmm. um i'm not gonna lie um I don't remember what we did the first half. Oh yeah, no, that was that was Shonen Jump, right? Yeah. 
Oh god, yeah. So we didn't plan on that. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I was gonna say because like that that thing always like happens to me. I, like I always forget the first half of that day. Like I always <laughs> remember Akihabara, but I'm like, what happened? Oh yeah, Shonen Jump took up like yeah the whole day. So we uh we went out and our plan was to go back to Pokemon Center to show Rob it because he wanted to see it. Um, but then also to stop by the Shonen Jump Park, which is like a little amusement park in the mall for anime. It's just a little thing, no, no, no big deal. Yeah. Um, and we were gonna stop by there. Maybe, maybe an hour, maybe something like that. I expected it to take maybe two hours. Two. We were going to grab yeah. lunch, like, like, and all of that included, it'd be like two hours, go on a few rides or something, which most yeah. of the rides I assumed were for like, you know, very small children. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll hop on like a merry-go-round. Maybe we'll hop on like a, you know, the, the thousand sunny boat excursion or something. It's just a tiny little like ride. And then we'd go on our way because we wanted to do like um, the planetarium and Totoroki yeah. Valley. And like, we had a bunch of stuff planned for that, for that Monday. Yeah, and so we get there, and we, we take our pictures and whatnot, and we start walking in, and as we're walking around and we're doing these things, we all, like, slowly start realizing, like, man, this place is kind of big, and then, like, we keep doing the things, and we start realizing, like, man, this place is huge, and then it's been, like, four hours, and <laughs> we just got to the Dragon Ball Z, Ball Z world, <laughs> Yeah. and uh, we're, we're, like, trying to get, we're trying to ride every single ride so we can win extra badges. Well, no, so, um, so what happened is... So they give you this like card and it's like if you get if you go on every adventure thing which we had already paid for like we did like mm. the full pass so they were like if you can get a stamp from every single place here you are entitled to get like one very special limited edition medal and we were like oh that's so cool i can't wait like i want to get like this whatever this coin or medal is it'll mm. be like a really good souvenir um yeah it turns out we did everything it took us like five and a half hours or something to get through every single thing in in, in this place and i like Honestly, within like by the two and a half hour mark, I think a everything after that we were literally just doing to get this medal because we were like we're already halfway in. We gotta like finish it now, and the lines got longer because the day was getting longer and more people were showing up. And anyway, so we finally finish. We get it all. We go to the front, hand in our tickets. We're like medal, please. And the lady's like, oh, she gives us the very same medal that we got three of each when we walked in because like it was just like that's like your prize yeah. for buying like the ticket we bought. So like. Yeah, it ended up being completely meaningless, basically, and we got, like, the same thing we'd already paid, like, not paid money, but but essentially, like, it came with our ticket. Um, yeah. So we wasted, like, mind you, we got the very full experience that we possibly could have gotten yeah. out of it. Uh, no stone was left unturned, or should I say, no Dragon Ball was left unturned. Yeah. Um, but my goodness, was that way longer than anyone anticipated. We're starving oh. at this point, like... <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. It was it was it was insane, and it was hilarious too. Cause like right before it happened, I'd lost my voucher for it. Yes. Like, man, I'm the, I'm gonna be like the one person who doesn't get yeah, poor, a poor freaking Roy, medal. He gets every single stamp, and then he loses his ticket, and he just needed one more. And so yeah, yeah I, he's like, oh, yeah. I guess my souvenir's gone. Like I did all this for nothing. Yeah. And I, I now I, I um I was very much like it is what it is. Like I was I wasn't like upset about it, but I was definitely like, damn. I'm like oh oh well. Um, and then it and so as we're walking out, and you guys get yours, and I'm like, oh, that looks very similar to what we got <laughs> at the beginning. And you guys are like, because it is. And I'm like, all right, then. I guess I didn't miss much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we walked out, grabbed a bite to eat, and decided, let's do um, Akihabara. Well, at that point, the planetarium, the planetarium was like, we, we all wanted to go home. Because we we'd stupidly, too, like shopped at the Pokemon Center. Oh, so right, when we so were going through Shonen Jump, around stuff. we had all of our bags still. And we had like... Because we'd done some, like, real shopping. Because Rob was there, and all the things that I kind of saw that I, I wanted on day one, but didn't pull the trigger. I was like, you know what, I'll just get it, like, on day two. So, like, I got, like, a shirt, and then Rob won a bunch of figures on the Crane Games at Shonen Jump Park. So then, like, right. we, we were carrying those, and so it was, like, it was, like, heavy between that and my camera and your camera, and, like, it just, it was a lot. So we wanted to go back to the apartment, drop our stuff off, and then at that point, it was too dark to do Todoroki, Todoroki Valley, um, mm -hmm. And so we were like, you know what? We were going to do Akihabara a little bit later on, but but let's just go. And good thing we did, yeah. too, because, like, everything even, closed. Yeah, like, we got <laughs> there, and within, like, the hour, like, everything was pretty much closed anyway. And it was still fairly early. Like, it was, yeah, it was like, like, 8 o'clock. Yeah. Not even. It was crazy. But um, enough, but yeah. though, that we got, like, a taste of it that persisted yeah. for the rest of the trip. Like, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, no, it, Four it was Four times good. over. Uh, I think Rob was really the only one who got stuff that night from yeah. from there. I think Nad got some stuff too, but um, yeah. So that yeah, was great. Was, and then it was very cool. Um, it was a very cool place. It was very uh, surreal because it's like it's like what you expect when you think about like the how how 
electric and you know how how the culture of Tokyo essentially um it's it's like literally what you stereotypically expect to like just anime stuff everywhere and gaming stuff everywhere and yeah all these figurines and everything like literally just like lining a whole street block good food um, too store after store good food um yeah later on in the trip we found that ramen place that was near there it's like yeah. this cafeteria place best ramen in the world <laughs> cannot cannot wow. rave enough wow um <laughs> uh but yeah no so it was a very cool place i that night i obviously like got a taste for it as you said but like i was definitely so tired that like i didn't really experience it that greatly i think i was really like the first store but then i kind of just tuned out if that yeah. makes sense like, also me and nad were fighting that night because she was super jet lagged right right and right, right. which was again it was one of those weird things where it was like if anyone had an excuse to be jet lagged it was like rob Mm -hmm. And he was, like, again, like, probably the most, like, kid in a candy store, like, gung-ho to be there and to look at every shop and climb every floor. And Nad was just like, I want to go home. I want to sleep. Like, so, mm -hmm. it's rough. I've been there before. So, like, you know, I, I get it. But I also, you know, had to kind of play the bad guy, which which kind of sucked because I was yeah. like, no, we're, like, we're having fun. We're trying. It's only 8 o'clock. Like, we need to stay awake and, and get through it. But she did eventually come around, and it was all good. Um, A but few, uh... A few good stories did come from that night, though. There was, a, uh, There were- I'm pretty sure that the, the first night was the night that you guys walked into the store. Rob was trying to get some stuff for his friends, um, Neon, I think, as well. Yeah. And he saw some Earthbound figurines, and I was like, oh, those are really cool. You should get those for him. If he's a Ness guy, you should get the Ness one. Um, but yeah, didn't he, like, find, like, <laughs> something in the corner of that case or something like that? Did he find yeah. a very special product? There was, for some reason, in all of now like there are cds and dvds and stuff and not just you know like anime cds and dvds like there are stuff like there, there's media in akihabara for sure but um for whatever reason in this shop that was solely dedicated to figures of popular anime characters Nothing and video else. game characters like ness and the earthbound crew for whatever reason in the very like the biggest most front-facing display case they had they had those Ness figures, and then in the top right corner, they had a 800 yen, which is equivalent to about eight American dollar uh, CD of like the greatest hits of this popular Japanese recording artist. And is this it, old dude? Yeah. It was just so weird and out of place, and just like foreign to what we were experiencing. That it made a big statement, and it was the only one of its kind in the entire shop. There were no other CDs, anime, or, or you know anything else. And so I, I said to Rob, like. Hey, you should get that CD. It's just kind of like a passing little like joke. You know, we make jokes. We're killing time. And he was just like, he when he got the guy over to get the Ness figure, he grabbed the CD too. <laughs> and the guy was so flabbergasted. He was so <laughs> like distraught that like these weird gaijin like American tourists showed up and wanted to get this CD, and we didn't even know who it was. And so we wrote yeah. it off as like, oh, it's for Brett, like our friend Brett. And we just kept saying, for Brett, for Brett. And then Rob haggled the guy and got it for $6 <laughs> instead of $8. Yeah, the guy the guy was bringing it up and he was like, uh, he said like 800 to Rob. And Rob just goes, I never seen it happen. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Rob goes, oh, 600 And the guy goes, 800 He goes, we should do 600 Like he starts haggling <laughs> with the dude right there on the spot for like, <laughs> no, no sparking it up or anything. It just, it just happened. Yeah. Like, Oh my god. It was phenomenal. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's even more to that story, but it's really not our story to tell, but it was it, it was it was so great. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Where, was there another story you remember from that night? Was uh, there, there was one more um, where me and Rob basically went up to the fourth floor to find Fire Emblem figures. Yep. And I had asked before where they were, and the guy wouldn't understand what I was saying when I said Fire Emblem, and eventually he was like, oh, Fire Emblem. Um... um and I was like, oh, I guess they don't, yeah, yeah, right. I guess that's not how they pronounce it, the way we do. So we can't find any on the fourth floor where the guy said they were. And so Rob's like, I'm going to ask this guy here who's in a J conversation with someone in Japanese and they're having perfect Japanese conversation. And I'm like, Rob, just say Faya and Bradham to get to speed things up. And Rob's like, okay. Um, and Rob walks up to the guy and he's like, do you have any uh, Faya and Bradham? <laughs> and the guy just like cuts instantly to like dead pans to Rob. And he just cuts to an, a perfect American accent, just goes, Oh, Fire Emblem? Uh, no, we sold out earlier today. <laughs> and it was just like this hilarious moment that just couldn't couldn't have been planned. It was just like... <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was funny. It was I, hilarious. I, but, I missed it. I missed it, yeah. unfortunately. But, no, but uh, it did sound great. And uh, definitely yeah. that joke lingered 
throughout the rest of the trip for sure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, we did uh we did hit the hay pretty soon after that store. Um we, we headed back. Yeah. Mind uh, you, we still like we place. didn't go to bed until like eleven or eleven thirty. Like, That's true, yeah, yeah. By no, the time we, we everything were... worked out and we tried to sa savor something, like we just yeah, we went back to the apartment. Um I think we grabbed some food or something after. We must have I, mean, I don't think so. Oh yeah, you guys grabbed McDonald's, I think. Oh yeah. right, yeah, yeah. All yeah. three of us got like, grabbing McDonald's. I just got. Fries I did not. And... I did not partake in the McDonald's because yeah. I wanted authentic right. Japanese food. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. It um, was eleven. I know. I'm such a snob. Can't have McDonald's. <laughs> and no, I eventually did have McDonald's because like it just it was so convenient and right there. And, yeah. You know who can say no to some chicken McNugs? But yeah. Um. So yeah, no. So the next day we went to Ginza, um, for the first half of the day. We went and had essentially a few hours before we had to go to a Pokemon cafe, and then later in the day we were going to go to the Tokyo Tower, which also had the One Piece amusement park thing inside of it as well. Um, so first off, Ginza, um, personally for me there's not really much to say other than I love the architecture and seeing the city sky, sky, uh, skyline. It was fantastic and amazing to, to see. Um, but did you have anything before the Pokemon Cafe in Ginza, like, I know we stopped at a few stores, anything that you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, honestly, not, not, not really. Uh, it, like you said, it was a cool city, uh, it's a great place if you want to shop for, like, just things that a person would shop for, like clothing, um, you know, they have, for whatever reason, they had a lot of, like, craft stores, uh, to, for, like, arts and crafts, and, like, knitting, and stationery, and things like that. Um, but, for myself, at least, it's like, you know, Akihabara and so many other places were, like, just better versions of that for, like, more refined uh, things that I wanted to, like, buy. So, I mean, it was cool, and I'm glad, like, we went, obviously, but we definitely really only went so that we could get to the Pokemon Center because, the, or the Pokemon Cafe, rather, because uh, mm -hmm. the Pokemon Cafe was in Ginza. So, yeah, it was more that, I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was yeah, a really cool sure. park that I would have loved to go to, but it was just, like, at the opposite end of where the cafe was so right. we didn't want to chance it we were actually uh we were actually kind of early to the pokemon cafe because we had the times wrong so it, we probably could have gone but uh yeah it didn't work out unfortunately but it would have been cool it was a nice day too which was uh, of course really cool yeah it was, it was beautiful um very very uh the best weather I think you could be in a city like that with uh all the different colors and buildings and everything but yeah no so we got to the pokemon center cafe <laughs> Uh, and once we were si once we were seated, um, it was a very cool experience. I know you're you're more so the Pokemon guy. Like I, I definitely love Pokemon and all, but you're definitely the Pokemon guy. So feel free to talk about the cafe and what your highlights were for that whole experience. Sure. So uh, you could only get in by reservation, um, and thankfully we had booked far far in, uh, ahead, so we were able to get in. Um, it was in the middle of nowhere, attached to a. Uh, like uh, Pokemon Center, the Pokemon Center DX. So that, that that also gave us some like when we did show up a little earlier, as I said, um, we were able to kind of you know just hang out at another Pokemon Center because why not? Um, mm -hmm. That wasn't even a Pokemon fun. But anyway, uh, so yeah, then we went in, <laughs> sat down. Uh, the atmosphere was really cool. Very like very much of all of the like quote unquote cafes that existed there. I would say probably the Pokemon Cafe was the most like what you assume to be like kind of a, a hip kind of cafe, I guess. Everything was kind of, like, wood varnished and, um, you know, very, like, rustic kind of looking. And, yeah, it was cool. Um, the food was great. It was all Pokemon-themed. Uh, so I got Pikachu curry. Uh, it was literally shaped like a Pikachu face. Um, mm -hmm. And it tasted pretty good. Nad got, like, a Vaporeon smoothie and an Eevee burger, um, which I believe Rob also had that yeah. as well. And you guys actually had the Gengar smoothies, also, which was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. They were in these, like, amazing cups with the eyes and, like, an ice cube that was luminescent. So yeah. it was a nice little effect. Um, but, yeah, no, of the whole experience, I think it was, like, an hour or so long, maybe longer, maybe an hour and a half. Um, what was your, like, just your favorite part? Of the Pokemon Cafe? Yeah. I mean, just, it's hard to really, like, pinpoint one part of it that was, like, mm -hmm. just the experience in and of itself was cool. Like, it's obviously yeah. not every day that, I mean... It's not just ev not every day. It's also impossible where we are located to go to a place that, you know, runs by just serving food 
that looks and is themed after like Pokemon. Like it just it was mm -hmm. it was an experience you just cannot get here, and so that made it really amazing to be a part of it. Um, yeah, the the food was the food like it wasn't the greatest gourmet food, but it was like mm -hmm. pretty good. Like it, it was really yeah. tasty. Um, and then there was like a show. A giant Pikachu mascot came out and did a dance, and people took pictures, and it was just nice. It, like it, it was a yeah. cool atmosphere. Uh, I like that you know you could win like prizes, which were actually just like coasters, which. You know, it didn't really matter. I'm not, like, keeping them, but it was I'm still... I'm using it right now. Don't judge me. It's Jolteon. I love it. All right. I all love right. my Jolteon well, coaster. Well, um, there you go, then. Um, I'm but no, like, it. I just... It was cool. It was just a very, very great, like mm. I said, atmosphere. And I'm really glad we went, because it's something I didn't do the previous time I was there. I don't even think it was open then. And, uh, you know, I've seen a few people now do it, but definitely, like, getting that experience firsthand. It's just something else, you know? Yeah. And again, it was nice it was that all four amazing. of us could enjoy it as well. Yeah, no, it was super fun. Um, I just love the atmosphere. Like, like I even talked about it when we were there. It was like, it's just cool to be in a place where, like, they're playing, like, Pokemon music. Yeah, um, and they pick good songs, so too. weird, but, like, it's so surreal. It's, like, the good, it was, the best choices you could really make for a cafe themed after Pokemon of, of music. I don't remember anything particular. I just remember, like, being like, oh, this song. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad they're playing this one. And it was just very cool to have that. Um... Uh, the food was very cool to see. Every time they brought it out, it was like it was like that like very, a very exciting feeling to be like, what is it? What's it gonna look Yo, like? Yo, and your parfait. You know? Oh yeah. So I got the ghastly burger to eat, which was super cool, and I loved it. And I, I honestly tasted very good. Like I, I was very happy with it. Yep. Um, and then everyone was getting dessert, and I was like, yeah, I'll get something. And I was like, this this is expensive for a parfait, but parfaits are good. And I'm talking like the Starbucks like in a cup yogurt. That's what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. So I got a Lapras parfait. And it comes out, and it's this giant cup that's, like, just huge. Just a beast. And I'm just like, oh, no. Because <laughs> I had already had, like, the Gengar smoothie. I was like, oh, my goodness. This it was, is, like, 11 uh, layers. It was so many layers. It was, like, ridiculous. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, I saw him walking towards me with it. I was like, oh, someone got a big thing, I guess. And then it was like... <laughs> This placed in front of me, I was like, what the... Yeah, what? like, I thought I was being a boss getting, like, the Mimikyu crepe, and mm -hmm. it had nothing... Like, that Lapras Parfait was probably the most, like, eccentric, um, like, just... It looked gorgeous on the table. Like, it was just... Mm -hmm. It was this giant glass that just, like... I don't know, it, there, there's something... That, like, it was, like, sparkling in a, in a weird way. Like, <laughs> it, it just looked really good. And just yeah. so well made, like so pristine. It was I guess. so well presented, like yeah. presentation wise. It was so it was it looked it looked aesthetically amazing. Um, eating it was a challenge because yeah. I felt like I was on man versus food. Um, just trying. And you don't to, want to waste like, the money now get, too, right? Yeah, you don't, like, that's exactly expensive. the thing. Like I'm the type of person where I'm like, well, I spent the money, so I'm gonna eat it. But then like I also, <laughs> I I walked away and I definitely overeaten. Let's just put it that way. I walked away from that being like, oh man, having that bloated feeling. Because it was so much. Yeah. Um, but it was it was pretty amazing. Um, you got a Mimikyu crepe, as you said, and that looked very cool. Yeah, it was um, tasty. It, it, but it was it was definitely very much like a, an Americanized type item. Like I think it was just like mm -hmm. a strawberry banana crepe with like some chocolate sauce on it. Um, so yeah, it, it certainly wasn't like it wasn't you know specifically Japanese or like that Lapras thing is something I'm pretty sure you could you could have only gotten in Japan. Like just how ridiculous it was um, yeah. where the Mimikyu thing it really was just it tasted like a crepe um, but it just happened to have Mimikyu's face which is still very cool glad we did it but yeah in, in hindsight I think the lot like one of the parfaits probably would have been the way to go but uh, yeah 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 and then after that we made the trek down to I believe it's I think it's Minato is the tech like the technical term for the city but basically we went to the the One Piece Tokyo Tower yeah and that was that was super cool so we went in there there's a giant shrine that we walked by first that I was like very interested in seeing, but we just didn't have the time to stop. But I, I got some cool pictures of it, and it was so cool to see. Um, and then we did stop though at this um, on the way very fast. I don't really know what it was. It was like this collection of um, different statues along with this wall of like tablet stones with words engraved on them. Um, and so that was super cool to experience some some more uh, cultural aspects on our third day in a day where I didn't think we were going to get to experience some of that. Um, but yeah, so we got to the tower, um, we went to the One Piece store first, and you guys uh, all got your stuff. I think I got... Was that when I got the poster and the chopsticks? Yeah, I believe I believe <laughs> you did buy some stuff that right, day. Right, yeah, so we all got our stuff, um, and went up, and, instead, and right before going to the top of the Tokyo Tower, 
we stopped at the One Piece. It's amusement park. It, it was like how Shonen Jump uh, was essentially, yeah. where it's like it's not like a whole straight up like amusement park. It's but an it indoor is, amusement like, park, basically. It's an indoor amusement park, yeah. And uh, it's in the Tokyo Tower, so that's crazy to me. I, I still can't process that that's like a thing <laughs> that like a country could have a brand like a show be so culturally relevant that it's in their version of what is essentially the Empire State Building yeah. for them. That's so cool to me. Um, but yeah, so we go in, we got our tickets, and it was very cool. It was an awesome experience. I still think, honestly, one of the highlights of the trip for me was just walking into that place and like the music was playing, <laughs> and we were all just like blown away, essentially. Yeah. Um, it was a very cool night. I really enjoyed that a ton. We were in there for a while, um, and it was it was just super fun. Not as long as Shonen Jump Park, though. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah. Not as long as that thing, which was an unexpected monster. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was fun. yeah, no, it was, it was, I really enjoyed it. It was super fun. You'd been there before, so of course, um, yeah, you, uh, you were definitely seeing it for a second time, which, which, um, I'm sure it was exciting for the, especially for the first bit where you get to go back and, and relive that. Yeah, with, they, they had changed it up a little bit for sure. So, like, there was, um, there was quite a bit that, that was different. I would say a lot of the first floor and a lot of the third floor were, uh, were, were changed up since the last time I was there, but no, mm -hmm. it was, it was really cool. Um, afterwards, we went up top to, like, the very top of the Tokyo Tower, um, mm -hmm. so we could, like, do the viewing thing, because, again, was it, it came nice, in the ticket. Yeah. Like, I'm not one, personally, who, like, really cares to climb really tall buildings and just, like, hang out because they're tall. Like, to me, that's just, mm -hmm. like, not that much fun. Like, when, when you get up there, it's like, oh, the view's breathtaking, and then, like, after, like, a minute, it's like, oh, wow, like, cool. Y you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. especially that was like my you know my second time up that one and I've been to the top of the CN Tower a few times and so I just like I, I'm I, I'm just not like big on that but still it was nice and uh, it was nighttime so you got to see all like the city lights from you know a bird's eye view yeah. at least for me I, I loved it and I was like just like super content um, just looking at everything from all the different angles you had uh, and after that we all we all headed back I guess that was it for the day um, I say that was it, but it was actually very chock full. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that that's pretty much what that day was for that. Yeah. And the next day was, oh my, man, my memory is just terrible. Halloween, so. baby. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, so we wake up and everyone's, everyone's getting ready and I'm like, I try on the costume, you know, the Donkey Kong costume that I got. <laughs> um, just to test to make sure it like, all works. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And then I start packing it away in my backpack. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a, a bit, bit of a hefty fit. And then I walk out and everyone's in their costumes. And I'm like, are you guys, are you guys not gonna, you know, put that away? And they're like, we're, we just gotta like, we just gotta wear these cause we're not gonna be able to stop back here once we, once we do. And so we've just cut, we're kind of stuck wearing these unless you want to find somewhere to change in public in a Donkey Kong suit. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. Oh no. So I go back. I reluctantly close the door, put on my Donkey Kong costume. Which is your and real this skin. Is, this is you, you finally this is had to be yourself in public. And it hurts. No. Being that, like, you know, <laughs> letting all the, the walls down and letting people in that much to your true soul, it's really hard. But you no. pulled it off, man. It, it was 10 a.m. It, it was Halloween, but it, and, and, and every now and then you'd see other people in costume. But it was 10 a.m. And so for a majority of, like, for, for like the first two or a few, two or three hours, it was like definitely more well, so alienated I think than you're right. But also, like Harajuku did have its fair share of costumes. Like there, I, there was like a Princess yeah. Peach. There was another like Mario and Luigi. Um, like they, there was a bunch of Mario and Luigi. So many people were in that. In yeah, Harajuku. but I'm not even talking about Shibuya yet. I'm just talking about Halloween or uh, Harajuku. Yeah. That's, and like yeah. there was, that's what I mean though. So like within like an hour, I knew that like okay, it's Halloween. It is acceptable to like be in these costumes. But getting there from uh, Ikebukuro, that was really, like, nerve-wracking because, yeah, on the subway, we were the only, like, everyone's in a suit or, like, a school uniform, and, you know, it's, it's, it's us in our Super Mario Brothers, like, get up. Um, and, yeah, like, it definitely, and you are already so much taller and bigger than... Yeah, and the, the yeah. Donkey Kong head just add, it puts me at a very tall height with that. Yeah, you fit the costume well, oh. for sure. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we went to Harajuku, and you ended up in a lot of pictures and a lot of people stopping. And yeah, um, between you and Nad, especially, like 
you guys really were like the the, the hit of the of the day. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it was a good time. Harajuku was cool, but it was definitely more for like Nad, I think, than than the three of us. But mm -hmm. it, it was still a good time. Um, we then walked because it was like that close that we could. We walked down to Shibuya, um, saw the crossing. The Nad crossing visited... was so sick. It was very cool. Yeah, so uh, so Nad visited that. like the Disney store. Um, we went to like a cafe, and then we decided to do karaoke. Oh yes, yes, the the, the biggest. Not, <laughs> I added all the regrets in the one day, wearing a monkey suit out in public, uh, singing Well, and like, and yeah, the karaoke thing. So, I always secretly, like, really wanted to do karaoke in Japan. Yeah. Because uh, it's in, like, a lot of anime and, like, stuff like that. Like, they'll go, and, and I was like, I think that'd be really cool and really fun. Especially with, like, all four of us. But, realistically, yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna, like, I know these guys don't want to do it. Like, so, I'm not gonna force it on anyone, and, like, we don't have the time, so it's fine. But then we were, we kind of had to kill time. Like we we were supposed to go mm -hmm. to to an Alice in Wonderland themed cafe, but I guess it had shut down like since we'd Googled it essentially, mm -hmm. um, and so like obviously we couldn't do it. it. Apparently it had moved or something back literally to Ikebukuro, which is where we came from, and like we weren't gonna train it back after walking from anyway. So we're sitting in the cafe, and I look up a list of like what are some things we can do while we're like in Shibuya through the day. And, you know, a few things are coming up here and there, a few stores, some museums. And then, like, number, I don't know, like, 14 or something on the list was uh, this karaoke place. And it was, like, mm -hmm. through the day, it's really cheap because it's, like, it's, like, half rates because they're not busy. Um, you can, you know, you can order uh, all sorts of, like, food and, and drinks. And it's just, like, a good time. And, like, yeah. so I was, like, oh, that sounds cool. And so I, like, suggested it. And it was kind of, like, on the, like, maybe list. And then I was looking at it, and I'm like, I wonder where it is. And literally, like, Rob, like, looks up, and right, we were, we were facing a window, and right across the street from where we were, it was right there. And I was like, well, yeah. if that's not a sign, like, I don't know what else is. Like, I definitely did not plan that. It just worked out nicely that way. And so yeah. we headed over. Uh, we spent, you know, an hour there, um, and we sang our hearts out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a really a, good time. I had a really good I, time. I there. genuinely had a blast. Like I, I wasn't ever like against going to karaoke, but I was definitely against ever picking up the mic myself. Right. Um, so like when he suggested it, I was like, yeah, we should do it. Um, cause and also cause um, I was kind of curious about it myself because I've never played the series, but I, my friends are super into it. Um, the series called Yakuza, and one of their favorite things to talk about is like this karaoke mode. I saw him do it a bunch of times, and I was like, there's no way karaoke is like like that, <laughs> is it? And I was like curious. Like, you know, get your own room and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe it's, and then, uh, so we, when we did it, it was, like, super fun. You know, you get your own little hangout spot and you, where you can sing privately. I guess, although we found out later that you could hear us because the speaker system was so loud. Well, also, it's that, but we were, like, literally the only ones there. Like, yeah, it we really was that dead. Complex, so, yeah. good for us, though. We got it, we got it, like, half off, so that was nice. Yeah, it was great. Um, it, was, it was a super fun time. And uh, Definitely a highlight for me great. of that day. Yeah, no, for sure. For um, sure. Yeah, and then I believe after that we went to some arcades. Mm -hmm. We went to some arcades. Uh, I played some. I played some bongos. We uh, <laughs> we played uh, we played Mario Kart, which was super yeah. fun. Yeah, um, only one race, but like it was only it one was really race, fun. but it was it was a good time. Especially because really we were dressed up as Mario characters. Like all of yeah. our characters were available to pick. Uh, yeah. So we just like I was Donkey Kong, characters. you were yeah. Mario, Nad was Daisy, et cetera, et cetera. and Rob yeah. was uh, Rob was Luigi, Luigi. and um. And then after that, I think we stopped, got grabbed some dinner, um, some udon and whatnot. Yep, rice and, bowls, baby. Yeah, and then we walk out and almost like, not magic, but you know, very, very weirdly, we walk out and all of a sudden, we start seeing a few more costumes. It's like it's like it's like the Narnia transition from from the wardrobe <laughs> to the world. It's like a few tree branches. Well, also like when few, when few we costumes. went into the the place, it was still kind of like date like it was dusk ish out but yeah um the sun was but setting but it was out, still it was like white out night. and then yeah. we went in we ate and when we came out it was like pitch black and everything was neon mm -hmm. and you just start noticing some more costumes we're making our way towards Shibuya for this 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 event um centered around Halloween and like as we start getting closer and closer there's just more and more costumes and then we got there and it's 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 impossible to describe um it's just there it was just a sea of like just people dressed up as as Halloween costumes, just yeah. just all lots in of one police. spot. Lots um, of police. Lots, lots of, of um, tourists. Lots of mm -hmm. camera people. People both like just obviously like 
photography, you know, s not students in the sense of, like, they were kids, but, like, photography, like, you know, they, that was their passion, like, their hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess hobbyist would have been a better word. But, yeah, a lot of those types of people. Um, and then, like, professional videographers, too. Like, like real yeah. TV stations and stuff who had employees there set up to, like, report on the on the craziness of, of uh, Shibuya Halloween. They say that across, like, the entire night, because it goes right up until the morning. Um, they say that it's, like, well... Uh, it, I think it's just under a million people end up uh, being through that city. And, like, as you know, Japan is not terribly, like, horizontal. It's very vertical. So, like, I'm sure as you felt the squeeze and, like, of being yes. a sardine in this giant city, uh, it becomes very apparent, like, wow, there are too many people for this city. Like, at least yeah. outside in, like, the main, like like alleyways and stuff it was a really weird experience like oh all in all it genuinely just blends together like a fever dream like it's yeah. so weird to think about but like in the moment it was so crazy like i've never been in like a i've never been like at a crazy concert or like at a at a you know people who go to the new year's eve thing and like all yes, line up in that right. crazy thing i've never done any of that stuff nothing remotely like this so i didn't really know what to expect also because like i thought it was gonna be like a few a few hundred people just like showing off their costumes walking through this like pretty ca like a pretty casual thing and then we found very very suddenly that it was like this insane just like so many people um thousands just flooding this like one district yeah. um and it was insane and we were we were just making our way through the crowd taking tons of pictures with people um or rather most people were just taking pictures with us we didn't really take pictures with others and um it was insane. It was just, like, the craziest experience. I loved it, all in all. It was amazing. Um, but it was, like, it was just it was just so incre incredible. Like, it was yeah. just so unique. If know? it was up to me, like, I would have loved to have seen how long we could uh, we could last. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to, like, go real late and, like, have a really nice, like, party time. Um, but I also recognized that, you know, not everybody in the group really, like, wanted to do that. Uh, people were getting tired. We did, we had bought and not like a whole ton but like rob had gotten some stuff at the one piece store and like we, we did have bags uh we like mm -hmm. i won nat a plush at the arcade um things of that nature so like we wanted to kind of like get rid of our stuff but we could i guess we could have found a locker if we really needed to but the point is uh after being in that for i would say two to three hours um of that chaos i think everyone was kind of like oh let's you know let's just go home um yeah so uh we took the train back uh, and then we decided to go to the Penguin Bar, actually. Like, the night wasn't over. Was, like, we got back yeah. home at, like, almost 10 o'clock. And then it was like, you know what? Let's let, let's grab some food. Let's grab, uh, let's go to a Penguin Bar and celebrate. Today was a good day. I remember we were like, let's grab some food. Let's go to the Penguin Bar. We go to the Penguin Bar. And what do they not really have anything good of? Food. <laughs> <laughs> but they had penguins. Uh, we, they had penguins. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you couldn't we, eat we the We fed penguins, the penguins though. for a second. You couldn't eat the penguins. This yeah. isn't... This isn't a Basashi place, but you definitely could look at the penguins um, and feed them uh, if you were so inclined, which yeah. I think I did once. I don't remember. Yep. Um, and yeah, and then we we all hung out there for a little while, and then we were like, we need some like actual food, <laughs> so we went to what I can only call the the Italian equivalent of Denny's in Japan. Yeah, um, it was very cheap, very '50s diner kind of esque. Uh, mm -hmm. But like super, like you could get like a pizza for like two bucks, like a like and a yeah. big pizza, not a slice of pizza, like a full a whole pizza. pizza but yourself. it was literally like a like an oven, a toaster oven <laughs> kind of pizza. Like yeah, yeah. it was uh, not the best food. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, yeah, we really probably should have just gone back to uh, a, a spot we'd already been to that we kind of felt good about. But or even just Denny's itself. At least like I could have gotten pancakes <laughs> and eggs or something. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it was what it was. We were all hungry, and, it, and you know, when you're hungry, everything tastes good, right? So yeah, uh, it was fine for what it was. But that pretty much uh, ended the day at that. I know uh, there were some rumblings of like, hey, maybe we should go to another place, or maybe maybe try like another area. Uh, and we just we were all just kind of like tired and said, eh, we've yeah. been we've been out in our costumes for such a long time now. At this point, we weren't in our costumes because we dropped our stuff off at our apartment. But yeah, we were pretty much ready to I think like just call it. And, uh, cause we had a big day the next, well, the next two days really were like these big, yeah. heavily kind of scheduled days. So, uh, yeah. So what do we do when we woke up the next morning? Yeah. So we decided, so we had to go to Disney. We definitely knew that we were going to go to Disney this next day. Um, but we wanted to go later at nighttime. And so we needed to fill the day. Um, so we went to Akihabara again because Rob 
had wanted to get something and you guys had also wanted to go back and of course i loved it as well yeah because so well, we went back. the shops were like closing as we got there basically so yeah we'd missed out on we a lot especially the game full. shops and, and things like that so mm -hmm. yeah so we went there first we stopped at the gundam cafe which is right 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 there um ate there which was in, which was interesting um i mean good food good food yeah it was just it was just um yeah, Gundam's it was, not it was, your thing. It was, yeah, yeah, Gundam's not my thing, so I wasn't really there to be to be good with. But also, it was just kind of like bland as well. But it wasn't it wasn't like terrible. It was just like not what I was expecting. If that makes right. sense. Right. Um, so then we went to Akihabara, and went through. That was super fun. I really enjoyed just that. Like, obviously, I enjoyed the first night as well. But it was different to like be there in the day and like see how. See, it literally felt like a completely different place from when we went last. Just because yeah, the daytime change. Um, and then also exploring a bunch of different stores and being able to explore the stores we were only in for five seconds and like deeper and see wh where they really went and everything. Um, yeah. Like there's this great place that I just love the atmosphere of. It was like this like under not underground market but it was like under like a whole building. So it was like this weird free flowing re like market of yeah. just like fifty different stores in this tiny little space that the you would think would be one store. Cubicles. Yeah. Like, like, literally, we got into a debate about how this guy was able to fit into his cubicle, like, like to get in there every morning and, wor and work there. It was crazy. These just tiny spaces uh, where they just sell things like batteries or, sc like, screwdrivers and, and Old little pieces of equipment. 1997 Walkmans, like, yeah. Yeah, radios and crazy, just, like, things, that, like, so obscure and, like, specific that, like, it's just crazy. It's, like, it's so totally alien to me. Yeah. It was so cool. I had to duck. I had to duck half the time because there was like pipes and stuff going across. But it was it was super interesting, and I love being in that space. And it was like it was a cool day. Um, I uh, I think I got a Roy Mustang figure that was cool. Um, uh, did you get anything on that day? That uh, I got the I got the the rare Pikachu plush that day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I dropped a pretty like... penny on that. That bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got you got a pretty uh, pretty collectible. Pikachu item. That yeah. was super cool. It was either between that or a, an old school Digivice. And when we went, so when we went on the Monday, uh, like day two or whatever, when we were there, uh, they mm -hmm. had like this. When I was a kid, there was like a certain Digivice from Digimon that I always wanted. Um, and they had it in, and I, I have it like I had a picture of it and everything. And I was like, oh, cool. So it was between that and the Pikachu, because I also took a picture of that of, of the Pikachu. And, uh, when I went back, they'd sold that Digivice. Like, someone else had bought oh, it. Oh, I didn't it was even gone. that. Um, wow. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, I mean, I, I think I was already leaning towards the Pikachu. Like, I went in the store with the Pikachu in mind. But in the back of my head, I was like, well, it's between one or the other. They're both kind of expensive, but I didn't mind so much because uh, when we went to the One Piece Tower, I had it in my head. They When I went last time, they had these super limited edition uh, watches that were, like, super collectible, but a little pricey. So... I had saved up specifically to buy one of these watches uh, when I went back, and when we got there, they, they really didn't have any. Like, the selection was was very limited. Um, it was basically, like, Nami and Law, who are just, like, two characters I don't personally have any, like, attachment to. So, I didn't really, I didn't get a watch. Uh, so, I had all that, basically, I had, like, the money I had assigned to get that watch. Um, I now kind of had freed up, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. So, I was like, well, when I go back, I, I thought about it for a few days. And maybe I'll pull the trigger on one of these, like, rare collectibles. And uh, so the Pikachu was left. They had a Chikorita as well, which is, like, a really cool... Uh, they're from the Pokemon Time, like, lineup. And they're just really cool designs. Like, just something different yeah. that you don't, like, see all the time. But I'm glad I got the Pikachu. Uh, it all, like, worked out. But uh, so I got that. Um, and we also saw uh, Rob's friend from the music, CD, like, the, the CD thing. Oh, right. Again, yeah, so yeah. that was cool. And I also got to learn... Uh, finally, it was like my final realization that like, Roy Boy is uh, you're a bit of a klutz. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I don't know if it's klutz. I think it's more like I just lack spatial awareness. <laughs> it's he... like I don't trip and stuff. I just like I just. So I'm at always... that point, there, there'd already <laughs> been enough times of like me wondering what was going on in your head because there'd be certain times where it's like it's very obvious that we should be going left, but you would just like in your own world kind of like wander off to the right and I'd be like where, where are you going but like we've walked this tunnel like four times to get home and you're going the complete opposite way and then you'd be like oh so like and it's not it wasn't obviously ever like intentional but I was like starting to like kind of wonder a bit I'm like wow Roy really like he's not good like you said like with situational awareness I guess mm -hmm. um 
And then it all kind of came crashing down, literally. We were in a vintage game shop. I'd set up my camera to get like a really nice shot of Roy like looking at video game shelves. And I somehow caught on camera uh, there's like this guy who was, I don't know, was he asking you for help or like what was- No, 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 he was just, he was just, um, he was handicapped and I was trying to make his life easier so I was like moving out of the way for him and I just like said hello and he was like, hey. And... <laughs> anyway, so they have this exchange <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I still don't know exactly what happened, but I just like, I hear like a giant like crash of like something falls on the floor in this retro game shop. Everything's like kind of limited and like old and I'm just like, what is it? What's going on? And like, so I don't know, like what, what actually happened? Uh, it was really, like, um, earlier, I guess I'd looked at these two Fire Emblem games, and I'd pick them up and put them down. Uh, and then I was looking at them without touching them, and I guess I'd put them down at a bad angle, because literally, just just by looking at them moments later, they just slipped off and fell off. <laughs> and, like, but just, they, they, they definitely made, like, a loud sound. Yeah. Like, it definitely crashed It was a pretty small floor. shop, too, like. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, the, the reason that story's funny is because, like, from the angle I caught it at, it's just, like, of course that happened, you know? Like, it, it's just, like... <laughs> It's crazy it that I caught player. you in such a vulnerable, yeah. like, natural moment, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, no, I found a Japanese version of Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. Bought that. That was super nice. We put that in the review? Uh, that was in the video. Yeah, that's true. I forgot that, about that. That was my idea, because I was like, originally the plan was just to, like, for me to have the cart that you have, and yeah. be like, oh, here, Roy, and it's like, it would have made no sense how that got to you. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was like, what if, what if it's like, I get this for you as like a souvenir from the trip and it's, you know, it just like, it causes you to go like crazy basically. Yeah. No, I mean, it made a lot more sense. Definitely. But, uh, yeah. and I'll, and I just like getting it cause it was like a nice little, like all strung together, little souvenir of like DK, but also Japanese, but also the, that whole meme and everything. So that was it, nice. It's a really great me memento too. And now you can like put yeah. that on your shelf and it's like. I did it, you know, like, it's over, yeah. this is my trophy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was super cool. I, lo I love the game story, it was super, it was super, like, cool to be in. Um, it, was, it was literally like being in another time, because it was all games <laughs> from, like, the, the 90s and, and in down. In such great condition, too, though. It's like, oh, amazing I feel condition. like they must Mint still almost. print them. Like, some some of those, like, SNES and NES games, like, the I boxes know, were so pristine that I almost feel like they printed them like five years ago. Like it's, yeah. it almost makes they no were sense. Definitely, they were definitely in, per in, in amazing condition. Um, you also had like PlayStation 1 stuff, you had Game Boy stuff, yeah. uh, N64, it was crazy, it was crazy. It was a very cool story. Uh, it was very cool, it was just a great atmosphere. Um, but yeah, so then we all made our way to Disney. Yeah. Um, I, I, am I missing anything in there? I don't no, think. I, think, I think we probably ate somewhere, like we ate something, grabbed something yeah. really quick. But, uh, and then, yeah, we made it, uh, did, like, the night time, um, and that was super cool. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, we, our time was definitely limited, which was unfortunate, but going at such a late hour, uh, it meant that our tickets were, like, again, half off, and, like, when, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing, like, a long-form trip, uh, cutting, cutting costs here and there isn't, isn't so bad. Mind you, like, yeah. I probably didn't need to buy that Pikachu, and, and maybe could have just done the full day, but the, the point is, is that, like, um, it, it, it just kind of benefited everybody, I think, at that time to, to just do the half. Yeah. And then we also, you know, got to go to Akihabara again, which I'm glad we did, because I think that was, like, a really fun time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, Disney was really fun. I've never, I mean, I know you're, like, kind of a, a Disney expert, uh, because you have some ties to, to Florida. Um, so, you know, you've, you've been one, I think just once, right? Or What, where? To Disney? To Di but, like, multiple Disneys, right? No, I've, just, I've been multiple times to the same Disney, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you've been to Universal yeah. once then, right? Yes, Universal. Okay, sorry, I had the mix Mine up. Minecon, baby, 2013. I'm a vet. Regardless, you are uh, <laughs> you are quite the the Disney guy, I guess. You're, you're yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, a veteran of the, the theme parks, whereas not, neither myself or Nad had, had ever been to a Disney theme park before, mm -hmm. so uh, that was kind of like a whole new world, as it were. Um just experiencing like the craftsmanship and the, the level to detail the the food like just the whole all of it right like it was so weird one of the weirdest things uh and they, this is absolutely like an obvious thing they did so it's not just me being but like you go into like the little mermaid uh place and it kind of smells like seafood and then you go into like the aladdin place and it smells like curry like yeah. they, they know how to they know how to like manipulate all of the senses in a way that like any theme park i've ever been to did not know how to do like everything yeah. you touch feels Spit, like like it was placed there 
everything you see, obviously, but like everything you smell and like hear is mm -hmm. specifically designed to like take you into that like nostalgic place, right? Yeah. Um, and that was really cool. Yeah, it was super. It was super fun. Um, I will say that the the food thing is definitely something that I've not experienced before. I might just be misremembering, but like they're definitely. I've never experienced like curry being prepared and definitely like the smell trying to be filled throughout this specific section or like yeah and even like the, they had like an american section, town thing and like right it kind of smelled like pizza and like french Best fries town. and yeah like <laughs> yeah it was super it was super great um the atmosphere was amazing they had like a mountain volcano thing that was super cool to look at and ride the ride that went through it um the rides are super fun i had a great time and you uh, love theme parks was... that's another thing i learned you're you can be clumsy but you also really like your whole demeanor it, it was like, I feel like part of you being, um, you know, a little bit younger than the rest of the group, it didn't really factor in much at all, really, I would say, yeah. on the trip. However, like, in that moment, it was like, the, like, kid in you, I think definitely, like, came out in a way that, like, it didn't really for any of us. Like, and Nad loves Disney. Like, Nad, Nad is crazy about it. I like Disney a lot, too. But, like, you, it wasn't so even so much that it was just Disney. It was just, like, being in a theme park. Just, like, did something to you. And it just made you giddy. Like, just, you were, you were <laughs> absolutely, it was like Christmas morning, man. Yeah, it was a great time. I, I love theme parks, so it's definitely something, so, something that, I, that I've loved for a while. So it definitely makes sense um, that, that's, that that's what happened, at least for me. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great time. It was, it was phenomenal. Um, but yeah, so we, we wrapped up whenever the park closed. Um, we hit one last Nemo ride and then did a little slow, slow walk out of the park. Uh, walked all the way back to the train station. Yep, it was a long um, train ride too. Yeah, yeah. Um, our hopes, y you and I's hopes were high for uh, oh, the Smash yeah. Direct that we were gonna watch when we got back. Yeah, that night for us it was the Smash Direct. Like for a lot yeah. of people it was I think 10 a.m. Like, yeah. you know, or, or at least in the morning for most people over here. But for mm -hmm. us it was like pretty late at night. It was like 11 yeah. o'clock p.m. Um, yeah, that they went live. I had avoided the, I avoided the Grinch leak, it was gonna be great. And then it was what it was. Although I gotta say, my boy Piranha Plant, I'm gonna main him. Yeah. But, um, I definitely, yeah. I definitely also like. I called that while we were watching. I was like, it can't. They're not gonna leave it at like Incineroar at like 69. Like, there's gonna be one more. They're gonna make it an even 70. And you and like we were technically both. I guess like you were like, no, they won't. That's it. Like it's just Incineroar yeah. and Ken, and that's it. And I was like, no, there's gonna be one more. So I was right, but technically it was a DLC character. But like, mm -hmm. you know, it was still number 70 to to the roster. Sure. I guess. It was Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's roster, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no. So, we uh, we watched the direct. We uh, we laughed. We cried. I think we kind of went to bed disappointed. Like I think it was yeah. one of those things after such a long day. Um, and like you know, Disney Disney can be stressful because it's an amusement park. You're trying to run to get to rides, and you're mm -hmm. waiting in line a lot, and it's hot, and it's because it was it was still very hot and humid there. Like. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was nice. Don't get me wrong, but it was just like it was like you know by the end of the day, and then to have like that troll of the piranha plant and stuff in that moment, I think we all kind of just like we originally we were gonna like stay up and kind of talk about it and you know hang out and I was gonna have like maybe a beer or something and I was just like ah oh, no no I yeah. think it's bedtime and I think we just yeah. all crashed. Yeah, no. Which for sure. in hindsight was kind of a, I mean we we kind of had to crash because we had to be up really early for the Fuji trip the next morning, but like yeah. also. I didn't want to go to bed too early because uh, it was Rob's last night. He was only visiting us for like four or five days or whatever it was. Um, and so he was leaving on that Friday. So he wasn't going on the Fuji trip with us. Uh, so it was kind of like the last moments that we get to see him because we would leave so early that I wouldn't even see him in the morning. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a little bittersweet, I guess. In in a way, it feels like, the, like that was like the last full day of like all of us together and morale at like the absolute highest where like it still felt like we had mm -hmm. like limitless potential in the trip left, I guess. Yeah, it was definitely a turning point of sorts. Yeah. Um, but the next and, day was uh, good too. Yeah, no, no, no. It, I'm not saying it was a turning point for bad, but I'm just saying like in in, in mentality, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, no, it, it definitely it, it, felt it, like sky's the limit. We were in that like novelty of the of the culture shock. Yeah. And everything. I feel like that was definitely that was probably that and Fuji the day of Fuji combined because it was a whole bus day. Right. Um, definitely was the turning point. Um, yeah. Not for anything bad again, just like for a different mindset. Yeah, I think the longest days were definitely the Disney day and the Fuji day. Uh, and yeah. and I, the Halloween day too, honestly, though. Like, those three in a row were like more like, you know, just, just difficult and 
stressful than I think any of like the other days combined. Yeah, like no, just sure. that like little string of days was. I mean, in hindsight, we maybe should have like spread them out a little, a little like thicker, mm -hmm. but. Um, Whatever. The point is, though, so, yeah, we, we got up super early. Uh, I also, that day had been in a whole whirlwind of stress and, um, it, like, just issues with, um, travel right. agent stuff. And we were supposed yeah. to, we were supposed to get picked up closer to, um, to where we were staying. I'd confirmed it with my travel agent, like, twice or three times or something. Uh, and then the day of, I realized I'd messed something up, so I had to, like, make a phone call. Um, to just reconfirm, basically, that we were going to be able to make make it. It was something that was in the fine print. I, I hadn't read it as well as I should have, which is kind of crazy because I feel like I overprepared. But anyway, um, so I called, and then it turned out they were like, oh, what do you mean? You're not supposed to be designated at this stop. You're at this stop that is, like, completely out of the way. And I was like, no, no, it, it, like, we were at that stop, but we've we've changed it. Like, we're, we're good. My travel agent, like, you know, she confirmed it, and they're like, no, no, she didn't. She never called us. And... So anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was like very livid. Uh, that that kind of like threw that whole day for me in a way that like I wasn't expecting. Um, mm -hmm. it, like, cause I was just like, and you'll you'll see why in a sec. But I had like some really you know big plans for for Fuji, and so the mm -hmm. fact that like it came so close to getting ruined the day before, and there was like almost nothing I could do about it, was like very frustrating. But yeah. especially cause like Luckily. I said, I tr I tried to cover all my bases. I double, triple confirmed that, like, she'd changed the stop, and then it turns out she just never bothered and lied to me, like, straight up, so. Yeah, um, it was a whole, it was a whole. Yeah. Like, it was like, it was like travel nightmares, essentially. Well, um, we were playing phone tag, because you, right, you yeah. were the only one who had, like, service, um, so, you know, they would call you, and then, you know, you'd give it to me, and then I'd explain something, and then they'd have to check something through some other company, and it's just like, it was a nightmare, but. Yeah. Um, through it all though it was a really good day but just like that was yeah. not was not fun but anyway so we ended up having to get up a little earlier than we intended originally uh mm -hmm. to get to this original stop which was fine but it just you know we were very lacking sleep um and we it was like gonna be the coldest day by far because we were going up to like the mountains yeah um, it was it was uh, so yeah we woke up around what like six seven i think i woke up uh, i think at five thirty. You actually yeah, slept in. I slept in. Yeah. Of, of, of you three guys. I was the one who slept the most that day. <laughs> um, I pushed it to the last second, but I was like, I didn't need much to prepare, so it was all good. Um, and we, we all got out the door, went on the train, got to the place, got some food, um, made sure everything was good, and then got on the bus to yeah. Fuji. And once we were on the bus, and I think I've got to say, yeah, I've got to say, like, uh, of all of all the experiences there, the drive to Fuji was honestly probably one of the best moments of the trip, like top five or ten. Yeah. Like I love just the scene, just the just like we we basically we were driven from the city that we were in, um, all the way to like the the through the through like hills and countryside and like as 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 uh, naturey as and and as uh, you know as, as much as you can get of that stuff and it was crazy it was and I love rural, stuff like yeah. that so rural like literally like you were seeing like old bridges that were like broken down with like houses that old, were like, like transmission towers tiny and old yeah it was it was so sick and there's like all these beautiful forests beautiful just like uh just like visions of nature and stuff and it was i loved it the whole ride there yeah i was literally just losing my mind <laughs> yeah. um it was great and it was it was nice for once too to like we had an English guide. Like, so we had someone, if yeah. we had any questions, if we had any concerns, because up until that point, it was pretty much just like, if there was a question or concern, we'd try to Google it. was a lot it. of Pictionary. We'd try, yeah. yeah, like, or we'd try to figure it out on the spot, um, where this was like, any issue there was, like, we could figure out the answer within seconds. And that was nice. That was like, something you take for granted until you like, don't speak the, the main language. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we got there. Uh, we went to Fuji, but because of the time of year it was, we didn't go as high as I, I think sometimes you can go. But yeah. um, it was still really nice. Uh, very clear day. We, we got actually pretty lucky again. There were some clouds and stuff on certain parts of the mountain. And where we actually, like, the bus pulled over and we got some, like, good photos with the mountain. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very we, glad we pulled over right there, yeah. Yeah. But then when we went to the actual, like, stop stop, it was kind of clouded over on that, like, that side of the mountain range. Yeah. Um, but it was still cool. It, it, it was a good time. Um, still breathtaking in a different way because of how, like, thick the fog was and how, like, just... Yeah, it looked out of this world, like, yeah. the fog that was around the mountain and, like, how it, how it was moving and everything. It was crazy. 
Um, obviously, it wasn't the mountain itself, but as I said before, we were able to stop like right before and get this like beautiful, clear pictures of the mountain. Yeah. That, you that also was, tried to rob a blind man. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, so they were like, they were telling us about these bells we were supposed to get, and I wasn't paying attention. I was like, whatever, I don't care about bells. And then they were very like adamant that we get these bells. I was like, oh, I guess we need the bells for some reason. Like, I, so we're getting, we're going through this line, and this guy basically, you hand this old guy a ticket or something that you were handed before. And by the way, what it was it didn't look like a ticket. It looked like an advertisement from a newspaper for food. Well, if so, you were paying attention, it she actually told us when we went there. She said, "All right, so it's a double-sided ticket. One side is to get your bell, and one side is a fifty percent off coupon to get Fuji bread." Whatever that the was. The front was the coupon. It didn't make sense. So you only looked at the one side, never looked Why at the other I side. Why would I not? Well, because you should have from been listening. My, from anyway, my... Anyway, from my... Roy was too busy. He made a friend on the trip. Uh, no, I didn't. Because me and Nad, obviously, like most seating arrangements have, you know, two people. So myself and Nad, you know, were, were sharing like two seats. And then in front of us on the bus was Roy and his newest best friend. Uh, I never learned his name, unfortunately, but... Yeah, no, me uh, either. Oh, you never did? No, but you guys I, so I talked to him for, we had one conversation. Well, where I, was that, I know to that's a lie, that because be I saw you have at sleep. least two on the bus, and then there was the one that we all had. Uh, what, when he, the, like, held us up by, like, 30 minutes? Yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> so this guy had his arm around Roy pretty much the whole trip. Uh, not because he was trying to hug him, but because he was, he was not on the window side. He was too tall. Yeah. yeah, he was trying to take pictures of the, the mountain ranges through the window and send them to his friend on Facebook. And Roy was uh, like in the way of the window, so he literally just wrapped his arm around Roy's head and then was taking photos. <laughs> like it was, it was actually kind of hilarious that you didn't say anything <laughs> to him. But um, yeah, so Roy made his friend. Uh, I don't know what his name was. I'm gonna say Clark. I don't know, but it was uh, he was an older gentleman, and they they were best friends. But anyway, so we get in this bell line. Nad puts down a ticket and says like, you know, Arigato, thank you for the bell. Uh, the old man like kind of you know gives like a smile. And then Roy stands there, just fidgeting, not knowing what the heck to do. And the guy's like, like just silent. And Roy's just like getting more and more nervous. And the guy's like, ticket, ticket. And Roy's like, oh. And so Roy reaches in and get, and pulls out the ticket Nad just put down. And the guy like snaps and then like, grabs Roy's hand. Is like, no, no. And Roy's just like, oh, I don't want it. And Roy like runs out of the line. I uh, listen. <laughs> At the end of the day, I found out that it was just for a bell anyways. Why would we need a bell? Just, I don't care about the bell. It's more to do with, again, bell. you and your, your awareness and just not paying attention <laughs> to the situation at all. Like, just not reading the room. Like, you must have been so in your head that you didn't even realize, like, every person in front of you was putting down a ticket. You have to understand. You grabbed a ticket. Like, <laughs> that takes Listen, a new should, level of... of you, have, uh, you have to understand that the Piranha Plant had just been announced this match. <laughs> oh, God, my mind right. was right. wandering no John's to the, the possibilities that could be... <laughs> Take yes. it up with this plan. All the possible. But yeah, so but yeah. after that, we were basically driven out to this nice lake um, with a, with another yet another beautiful vis visage 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 vista. Vis uh, not the word I was thinking of, but that works. Yeah, um, of nature, and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, it was like this restaurant where we ate a very traditional Japanese meal um, with these just sweeping windows that just had just oh, it was so beautiful. Um, we had lunch. The too. food was. Yeah, the food was amazing. Um, I was all about experiencing um, as, as much as I could about, you know, literally any moment as possible. So I was all about the food, tried every single thing I could get my hands on. Yeah, it was um, hot pot too. Yeah, it was hot so pot. It was like a soup. It was super good. There was some yeah. seafood. There was some other stuff that you ate that I definitely did not. <laughs> Roy was a lot yeah. more experimental. I'm actually usually pretty good, but when it came to that, it was so fresh and so like just fishy. That I yeah. Uh, yeah I just I, I couldn't I couldn't buy in I guess like I just they also had like these mushrooms that were like I don't like mushrooms either yeah absolutely horrendous but I still ate them because I wanted you to ate everything I, I appreciated yeah. it for sure but I did enjoy yeah. most of the stuff like I ate all the salad all the soup even though I didn't even know what was in the soup I think there were vegetables I've never even had before in the soup but, yeah uh, yeah there were some interesting veggies in there that I literally was like what are these and I never figured it out but yeah the mushrooms um, and the fish just was not uh, <laughs> was not going for me I even ate yeah. like uh, by accident I thought it was a deep fried pickle and I think it ended up being like a prawn like a deep fried prawn yeah or like a mollusk sense. or something I don't know it, was, it definitely was not a pickle yeah I it didn't yeah but oh well um, yeah so we, we had a nice lunch it was really tasty. Roy got experimental on us, uh, but immediately, like, we only had, like, 25 minutes to eat, and then we had to go back to the bus where Roy got to sit beside the love of his life again. 
Um, and then my we wonders, Clark went on a boat ride. Right, right, yeah. We went, we went on a boat. Um, on Lake they took Ashi. Us from, yeah, they, they took us on Lake Ashi to get to a cable, cable, cable car. Yep. And uh, yeah, no, it was, it was more, more nature, more beautiful views than vistas. Yep. Um, we got off the boat, uh, and they were basically like, "All right, just be back here by this time. <laughs> don't make us, don't make us late, please. We will, we will leave without you. Do not be late." And all of us were like, "Yeah, none of us have the gall to be late." So it all worked out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So we went up this like observatory type of thing, which was connected to the cable car. They tried to make us take a picture with her money. Um. But yeah, no. So basically, we went up the cable car, and that was that was a, that was that was very interesting because I've never done that before. Um, it was like a big thing. It was like a big old cable car, and it was very just like rickety. Yeah, very rickety. <laughs> there were many moments where I was like, "Oh no!" And we were packed oh. in very tightly as well. Yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot of weight that could you know drag down a cable car. But you know, it all worked out. We're recording this video right now, so. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. You got a bunch of cool shots. Um, yeah. I, I was not as, you know, I didn't get as many shots in the cable car as I would have liked. Um, and then we got yeah. to the top. Yes, yeah, so we got to the top. Um, yeah, it was, it was very beautiful. Um, literally nothing I've ever, like I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, on one side, there's this mountain, um, with, with like this shrine in the distance that looked absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. And then you turn around and there's just this amazing, like, like it's it's so, like, there's no words to describe how, like, incredible the view of of that whole, like, like it was amazing. Um, with, you could see like the ocean on one side of you, but then the sun was setting and it was beyond where the land was, so it was like the sun setting behind these little hills that were surrounded by ocean and it looked fantastic there. It was like this beautiful, just orange sky and it was so it was so beautiful i loved it i was just like so enthralled with it with uh and just you know it was it was crazy yeah it, it, it was a really gorgeous uh like scenic landscape for sure mm -hmm. uh and they also had said like before we got on apparently that uh it was very rare to even be able to see down like the mountain range from the top yeah uh just because of like clouds and just how far down it is and and we actually had pretty much a um, clear view, like yeah, yeah it's it a little foggy, I guess, but in a way that actually like added to the atmosphere, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was it, it was just gorgeous. But anyway, uh, so I got engaged on the top of that mountain. Oh yeah, I forgot. I completely had to slip my mind. Mount Hakone. How... Oh, it slipped his mind so hard that he actually uh, ended up in the shot of the engagement. <laughs> I set up my tripod and I'm like, Hey Roy, can you take some pictures of us? And he's like, Sure, sure. And uh, he went to take some pics of us and. He literally got right in the way of the camera, like, like specifically dead center, as like the moment happened. So, but it's okay because he did get, uh, he did get like record it from another angle, which actually ended up being kind of a nicer angle in a way because you get to see like that background more, um, mm -hmm. and it's really really nice. So it's the height. It's kind of like it, it was a trade off. It was like mm -hmm. it, it, we missed the moment a little bit, but we got like more angles out of it. So it kind of you know kind of balances out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. You have to also understand, again, you know, when you're up there, you start reflecting on things, you start thinking about what's important in life, and so, for me, I just, the piranha plant was, again, just filling my head, and, you know, things happen, but, um, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was awesome to see you get engaged, um, uh, to see that my smuggling the ring through customs paid off. Yeah, uh, it did, she was but, surprised. Yeah, yeah. It was a very romantic moment, especially with you being there, that was the most yeah. romantic. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah, I, I'm just I'm very atmospheric in that way. But yeah. um, you're like you ooze yeah. romance, like it's yeah, yeah. That's but what no, they say it, about the Roy boy. It was good though. It, I'm not gonna dwell on it too much. Um, there, I am making like a vlog, and that moment will definitely be a highlight of of mm -hmm. the like home video of the trip. But uh, yeah, I, I I think it was a very nice moment. It's definitely a story to tell people uh, forever, um, and that's really cool. And uh, I'm just glad that it all worked out because it was a lot of stressing, a lot of planning, and uh, of course there was a lot of mistakes from my travel agent that almost resulted in us missing the bus. So uh, yeah. the fact that we got there in one piece and it all worked out exactly how you and I had kind of been talking about it and planning for it for like months uh, was really nice and a big weight off my shoulders like for the entire trip. Yeah, it was it was super awesome. Um, 
And then we and, uh, went down the mountain. We, uh, we went down the mountain. A little bit more lovey dovey oh, right. than when we went up. All three of yeah. us, of course. Uh, of course. And yeah. then um, uh, we get on the bus, and I'm really like, now I'm ready. You know, Nad wants to tell everyone because we don't have like data really. Like we, yeah. So we just got engaged, and of course, like in this world, like everybody wants to like share it with people. Nad wanted to tell her like parents and her cousins and like all these people, and she literally couldn't. Like she just didn't yeah. have any way to do so. She had and no you have to cell, imagine. She had no internet, so we're you know we're on the bus and we're waiting, and uh, we know it's gonna be a really long trip. And tired. Home. And of course. Yeah. Roy's soulmate, Roy's Roy's bus <laughs> My buddy, lovely Clark, um, dared to be late. Like he dared to defy the rules. Like twenty and minutes late too. Li- and the only one, like, or everyone else crazy. was early on the bus. No like, one was even like, like a little bit late. I kid you not, though. Like as she was like, "Oh man, we're missing people." It was multiple people at this point. Yeah. I literally am like in my head, I go, <laughs> I remember being like. I know how this is gonna pan out. I know how God's sense of humor works nowadays. I'm I've become well accustomed to it. Clark is gonna be the one. To be like on the the final person on the bus, yeah. And lo and behold, there he, there he is, See, uh, twenty five minutes late, hustling Clark, to the bus. Clark had unlimited data, and so he spent that entire trip rather than like looking and being in the moment and being like aware. He spent it uh, on Facebook talking to this friend that he'd met on a previous <laughs> trip, um, and like talking about meeting up and sending this person pictures rather than actually like being present. And so his awareness might have been less than yours. It's actually kind of a miracle he didn't somehow wander into the frame of the proposal. No, video. actually though, he was just wandering all around. Because like he, I, was he would show up from time to time, just like, time. yeah. But like, and like, in, <laughs> wandering is the perfect word for how he would show up and disappear. <laughs> I've never like, seen one person like require that much like one-on-one time with the, like the guide. Yeah. Like she oh, basically never left your guy's row. Yeah, it was so annoying. Like literally, like the, the, I talked to him two times. Once in the beginning when I was trying to just like make it nice and just talk to him. Right. But then the second time was I was so exhausted, just trying to catch like a twenty minute nap before we got to the to Hakone. Yeah. And he just kept talking to her about the most basic thing in the world. Like it basically resulted in you're gonna have to ride the train. Here's how the system <laughs> right. works. But like neither of them are getting it. So I literally just popped my head up, explained to him how the train system works, and then popped my head back to sleep. And he just kept talking to her because he didn't understand a word that I said for some reason. <laughs> and <laughs> it was just a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Yeah. It was, yeah, uh, it was no, definitely basically a long no day. one. It was like us and like one other couple knew how to like use Tokyo Transit. And literally everybody else was like, what? You yeah. take the train? Like it was so weird. <laughs> like I guess all these people had just like stayed in their hotel and had like guides for everything and like yeah. only use cabs or uber like it was so weird but anyway uh yeah so great night overall we went out we celebrated dinner uh at a nice italian restaurant you got all dapper and dressed up which is great because <laughs> uh nothing like a fancy roy um yeah and then yeah so we ate and i think we were all ready for bed by the end of that one it was full of emotions yeah. and full of stresses and um just a really long day i had gotten actually pretty uh like car sick on the bus as well Mm-hmm. Um, which it was, was not, a terrible ride. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, was really bumpy, and I'm not, gr- excuse me, great with motion sickness, but uh, I also had a couple. So I did have internet. Uh, I don't remember how. Well, I had the pocket Wi-Fi, so I wasn't, I wasn't really even like sharing like the engagement news with anyone. But what I was doing is I was talking to Rob, who at the same time, like right after I got engaged, uh, had also. Um, just got into the airport and like was sitting and I was, you know, checking in on him. So while we we're going to this, th- this hill, I was also having like a big on conversation with him about like, you know, thanks for coming out to, to Tokyo. I appreciate it. I know you went through a lot, you know, bada bing, bada boom. But, uh, doing all of that really like just, yeah, I, I was feeling really sick going down that mountain and like reading all those characters and typing and yeah. But anyway, yeah. fact is we made it. We were all good. Once I got off that bus, we were fine. Um, we actually ended up in Ginza funnily enough, uh, and then had to get back to Ikabukuro, but we did, right. and we ate, and then the next day was probably our first, like, just calm day, like, yeah. we spent most of the morning just packing our suitcases, making sure things would fit, uh, mm-hmm. not so much you, because you didn't really have as much of that issue, but, like, myself and Natty really needed to, like, before we spent more money and got souvenirs, and th- we needed to know, like, how much suitcase space we'd have, um, and yeah, luckily it eventually all worked out. But so we spent a lot of the morning like just doing like a mock pack kind of thing, yeah. just making sure we had space and seeing what we could get left. And thank goodness we did, because like I almost got like my one friend Brett like this poster thing that was like in glass, and we would have had no room for it. So instead, like he got a T-shirt. And um, but yeah, uh, so we did that. We Ate then nice went to uh, Meiji Shrine. Wait, what? was that that day? Yeah, that was after Fuji. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought this was going to be filmed. No. So okay. we, we were Whoops. supposed to go um, to Meiji Shrine for the Autumn Festival, but we got there a little later because we were, like, just being just mm-hmm. kind of lazy, honestly. Like, just very melancholy, kind of like Rob's gone, the engagement's over, um, you know, we had nothing to do, basically. Like, like there were things we could have done, but it was just kind of like, I don't know, I think we were all kind of feeling like... The morale was low that day, because we, yeah. like, we were also tired from those three back-to-back yes. days that were, like, the, the roughest of the whole trip. Yeah. So it was like, that was waging on us, but then also the morale in general. So I think we were all just tired and, like, more lethargic than normal. Yes, that's a um, perfect word, but... Yeah. And so, so we were supposed to go to the autumn festival, but like by the time we got there, it was basically just wrapping up. Like we just mm-hmm. missed all everything. Uh, I'm sure. I think there was a horseback archery thing, which would have been really cool, obviously. But like we saw all these people like walking out with like their bow and arrows, like um, and dressed up mm-hmm. in you know, um, like uh, oh, oh my goodness, like robes basically. Yeah, uh, you it did just, see um, a wedding though, an, an ancient wedding being performed. Yeah, so um, we did. Yeah, we we were able to still at least enjoy like Meiji Shrine and Yoyogi Park, uh, just in their natural state, basically. Like, they yeah. weren't closed yet, uh, and like you said, we got to see a wedding ceremony live, which was really cool, and experience, like, the remnants of the Autumn Festival. Like, it was very busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, you know, a lot of, like, love in the air. It, it was it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. The park was, was bumping. It was a cool experience. Let me tell you. The park was bumping. Um, But, yeah, no, it was... The, the shrine itself was beautiful. Like, I loved seeing be, being in a place that was so uh culturally significant if that makes sense like it was so the i don't know it was just beautiful there and like definitely a little bit otherworldly if that makes sense yeah um it was fantastic it I was crazy there. there were couples yeah. families sports teams runners dogs like oh yeah, yeah, like yeah people practicing j-pop routines like it was it it, it was crazy kites flying oh, literally flying, everything and man hunt games being played yo 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 yogi part yeah uh, there's this there's this fantastic moment that I, I personally love where there's like this beautiful skyline where it's like trees surrounding this one building that was like in perfect it was perfect framing essentially yep. but I was just like a little bit off in my shot so I was like alright I need to walk over here and as I'm walking over I trip um, and I think that was like yeah so I, so I trip um, and I catch myself just before falling well, I would have almost fallen into a lake essentially so I catch myself um, but in tripping and making the loud stumble that it was, <laughs> this man who was hiding behind a tree How you didn't that see I didn't him, see I'll never because know. he was hiding. He was I didn't see him. The tree was big. He was hiding. I, I, how he could I have seen him from my tree, angle? Though. There was like a, a yeah, I know. Speed, but like, like by right the time I could him. have seen him, I was falling already. So I land, <laughs> and the man has what is ultimately like like whatever the layer below heart attack is. He just he <laughs> freaks out. Like, he, he just lost fly, he just, it, yeah. He literally flies back like it's a cartoon TV Screaming. show. Just, like, flies back, yells. He's like, oh, 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 oh. And he flies back, and he's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, are you so, I'm so sorry. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> Roy like, being clumsy Roy. <laughs> and uh, he's like, manhunt. I'm like, what? And he's like, I'm playing manhunt. I'm like, oh. And then he's like, just runs off <laughs> into the into the into the into You're the like, distance. Still kind and of just, recovering because you'd like. I'm processing over. what just happened. I, I basically over. like, like me and Nav were just like ro- walking. Like we're like, oh, Roy's just filming like the lake over there. Nothing bad could happen there. And then all of a sudden, we hear the screaming and the shouting, and look over, and Roy's like getting up off the ground, like got his <laughs> camera like shaking in his hand, like freaking out. Some Asian guys like yelling at him. <laughs> yeah, and it was like he wasn't like yelling at me. It was just like yelling in my general direction about how he was playing manhunt, <laughs> and then just like ran off with like the the most comical run in the world, yeah. like into the distance. It was just like, was a a, like a whoop, 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 whoop. like yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved so it. It was fun. It was fun though. And yeah, yeah. We it found was, the best street vendor for food. Um, mm-hmm. I only tried literally one piece. I regret not getting my own chicken. Um, chicken. What is it? Yakitori. Yeah. Yakitori. Yeah. Um, so good. It was so. It was honestly one of the best chicken I've ever had in my life, and it was just one piece. Um, yep. It was, and it was just like the street, random street vendor. Yeah, it was super like cool. we just stumbled upon it by accident. Yeah, we weren't even supposed to go that yeah. way, really. I just like messed up the directions and uh, getting back to the station. But mm-hmm. also, that might have been the busiest train ride we took. Like, I'm pretty sure didn't we even miss a train? Like, it was so full, we had to like. Oh yeah, yeah, because people were coming back from the from the festival. From the festival, still. yeah. So yeah. it was like that was the most packed subway. It was a Saturday yeah. night, and yeah, like Roy said. Um, yeah, just just absolutely insane. But so we went, uh, we did eventually get on a train, and we went actually like pretty much straight to Akihabara because we didn't really buy anything. Oh, right. And yeah. you guys wanted to eat, and 
Um, but also, we were kind of feeling like... Uh, Nad was on the hunt for these, like, chopper figures mm -hmm. at that point. So, like, she wanted to see if she could find another one, which she actually did find. Uh, mm -hmm. The last one she needed. And you also... Um, you were... Like, I had told you the night before, because you graciously bought mine and Nad's dinner in honor of the engagement. But I said... Uh, I refused, and I was like, well, here, at least let, let me give you, like, some money. And you were like, no. And then I was like, all right, well, then I'm buying you a figure. So... <laughs> Uh, I had to buy you a figure, basically. Even though you ended up yeah. basically buying it, I just gave you some money towards it. But yeah, um, so yeah, that was like another thing. Oh, and we needed to go souvenir shopping, which was right, the whole reason right, we were right. packing that morning was to figure out yeah. how many souvenirs could we get for who do we still have to buy for. So we like basically we're just like let's let's get all our souvenirs right now. Like yeah, um, yeah. So we we accomplished all that. You had some delicious ramen there. Uh, the best the vending machine. Stuff, the yeah. best ramen. I've ever had in, in in all of the two weeks that I was able to eat ramen <laughs> of my whole life. The best ramen. So good. So good. Oh yeah. my goodness. It was a nice tasty tonkatsu ramen. Yeah, yeah, it's it was very good. Um and then I think that was pretty much it for the night, right? Like after yeah. that we just headed back and Yeah. And then the next bed. day was the day everybody sees on film. Like that day we didn't really go out a whole lot because it was mostly me and you like had to get had to buckle our mm -hmm. bootstraps and, and really sink our teeth into what would become the DK-64 review. Yeah. Um, so we had a plan. Like... We'd, we'd filmed one small scene, the scene of you, like, walking into the, the apartment. Like, basically yeah. day one. Like, like yeah, day one Yeah, that was literally, day like, two. the morning of our first day, I yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, so we basically, we went out, ate some food, and then we came back, and we just said, we're like, yeah, we're filming this whole thing today, so let's just get in that mindset. Um, yeah, no, it was super fun. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that we were able to film it. And that, you know, it looks good, you know, yeah. like being able to have like, at least the stuff where it's like only one of us because we were able to handheld it and stuff like that. So we were able to like, get the stuff that was like, my favorite thing is at the beginning with the horror, the horror, like joke <laughs> satire thing where like, yeah. it just keeps zooming in on the door and I'm like, the violin music just keeps uh, stitching up and I, I like the camera work I think makes that. Because um, usually I have to use tripods exclusively. Yes. Uh, so yeah, no, it was super fun to I do that. I was also super like, adamant about the like the first time people see me i need to be like completely vulnerable like in a way that no yeah. one's ever seen me before because it's like i just felt like not only would it be just funnier if it's just like me like in a towel like you know basically thinking i'm at peace thinking i'm like you know in the perfect like situation and i'm like and then like you just like stumble in um but yeah and then like the jiggly face mask that just like came at a later time yeah but, I always knew well, I remember when was... writing it, I knew there had to be, like, a comical, like, yeah. moment where, like, I open the door and you're there and I freak out. And, like, it's, like, something something hilarious for you to be in a situation like yeah. that that is normally not present at all. So, and the Jigglypuff face mask was a godsend, honestly. I think it's a bit much better than a shower cap would have been. Yeah, because originally, um, yeah, so the plan, we were looking all over Tokyo uh, yeah, for, for a shower, shower cap. cap. So that would just, like, mm -hmm. you know, me, like, just coming out of the shower. And then it was like, no, what if we do, like, a Jigglypuff face mask? Because we couldn't find a shower cap. And yeah, Pokemon ironically, Center. we could find a Jigglypuff face mask, but we could not find a shower cap. Right. So, right. but, but yeah. yeah, it worked out great. I think it was hilarious. We, um, like, Nat basically stayed filming. in that morning while mm -hmm. me and you shot all around Ikabukuro. Uh, we mm -hmm. went into Sunshine City. Uh, took a long time to get to a park to get that, like, last-minute scene. Unfortunately, yeah. I think we already talked about this, like, earlier on in this podcast, but... We did, yeah. Basically, yeah, it just, like, it took a really long time to get that shot, but it turned out better than I thought it had any reason to as like the sun was setting yeah. um and yeah so that's that's how the DK64 one was born towards the end of our trip uh yeah. and then that night we, we uh went to Golden Guy well we also had the best the the ramen place in Ikebukuro oh yeah for 40 how did minutes. I forget that yeah yeah it was raining so, too it finally like and not like raining a lot or anything just like kind of spitting a little drizzle, overcast yeah. it was the first time the weather wasn't like gorgeous I guess mm -hmm. um, but it was on but there's like honestly some beauty in that in like in for, not imperfection that's but you know what I'm saying like there's yeah. some, there's some beauty in that type of weather that I personally like and it looked yeah. great in the city yeah no, um, of but yeah we actually went to a ramen place that was like it's very well renowned so you have to usually wait about at least for us it's a 40 minute wait yeah outside um just to get in and then you eat uh and it was super good um it was so I still good. think that overall the other place was better but that place definitely had the best like meat um it definitely had the best um green onions and such. Yeah, just like specific things about it. Were the, they're known the for their pork. Basically, like yeah. most ramen places are like, we're gonna make sure that the broth and the noodles are out of this world, but our pork is gonna be, eh, and our egg is gonna be, eh, like, 
and this place was kind of like, all right, we're gonna have like everything's gonna be good, but our pork is going to be like the most delicious pork you've ever tasted. Ramen or no ramen? Like even outside of ramen, that pork would have been fantastic. Oh, it's it was it was perfection on yeah. a plate. Yeah, it was or in a bowl rather. Perfectly, yeah. It, it, it was, was so incredible. Tasty. Um. But yeah, so I can't yeah, believe no, I forgot after, about that. But yeah, we yeah. we had like the best dinner. In my opinion, that to me is still like the quintessential. Like I was saying to, to Nadia uh, today, actually, we had had some ramen. And I said like, you know, ramen is kind of ruined for me forever. Because like, yes, there's places like like I said that I, I can go to even in my current city. Because uh, it's such a nice hot pot of, uh, or melting pot rather, of just, you know, flavors from all around the world. But I can get some really good ramen here. But like that pork... I'm gonna be chasing forever, basically. Like yeah. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get back to that pork. Like again, and there's like there's nothing like it. If that makes sense, like even right. in Japan, like there's no pork similar to that. Not yeah. not even like quality wise, just like the type of pork that it was. If that makes sense, like, yeah, it was really it, it was very good. It was so good. And then we went um, to Golden Guy, which is the did, city of bars in which Shin honestly Shinjuku. was definitely a lot more. A lot, uh, a lot more exciting in the atmosphere rather than the actual, you know, <laughs> places themselves. Well, um, I think th the thing too, though, is that like, it depends who you're with, right? So I noticed like a lot of the people having fun were like tourists who were, you know, probably like English or American and just a mm -hmm. huge group of like guys who were just on like a boys trip and mm -hmm. they were just, you know, they were cheersing and singing and just like, you know, being drunk in the street. Like, and that's just, that wasn't us. Like, we're just a bunch of like, yeah. you know, nerdy gamers. Uh, I don't even think you're like like you know of legal age to drink in your at least in your yeah. home country, um, and like you know Natty is yeah. not a big drinker. I'm really not a big drinker even on vacation. Like I, especially when you're like in a place where again it's, I was never really worried about Japanese people trying to start stuff. Like they're very respectful, but I was like when you're around all these like drunk tourists, it's like who knows what could happen, right? Yeah. So I it was, was definitely, definitely like just cool to cooler to walk around than actually be there. If that makes sense, like it was cooler yeah. to take in like. Shinjuku itself was even even was just like this beautiful just Times Square but a whole city not not just one square just a whole right, city yeah, of just town of, of time Times Square with like the, it was just so electric and and uh, fu futuristic and just crazy looking it was it was phenomenal um, and then Golden Guy itself was so cool because it's like these like tiny buildings everything's cramped together but like and everything's it's, like, old homey, right like they, rustic they, they, style yeah they kept all the like old kind of. I don't want to say vibes. Vibes probably isn't the, the right word, but like, just like the atmosphere, Aesthetic. the building, the architecture, yeah. like it's all very much it was so rustic and and, and classic. And yeah, and and very much an outlier in that city. Like how yeah. you just said, it's so electric and digital, and then it's like in the middle of it is just like this it was a old piece of history. Crazy juxtaposition yeah. for sure. To me. and it was it was so cool. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely it was definitely interesting. Did we do anything after that? I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't think, so. think we did. We probably yeah, again. I think we, just... I think we we might have grabbed more food from some some place. Uh, I think you and I actually attempted that night to go out and uh, and get pasashi. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so quick quick injection of backstory here. Um, when right when I first booked the trip, I remember doing a ton of research, like taking in all the information, like I was in the Matrix about Japan as I could. And I found out that they that there it's a it's a delicacy, uh, horse meat, um, and I was like, I, I grew up on like Travel Channel and these crazy shows that I like people would watch, I mean where people would like have crazy food, and I was always like, I'll take in whatever I can get from a culture. So I was like, I gotta try some of this, which is called basashi. It's it's raw horse meat, <laughs> and it's not like I wanted to taste it. It was more like I just want to have that experience. So that was like on my checklist of things to do, and so Stan was definitely very helpful in getting me to try that because he he knew that it was like a big thing for me well so the and thing so, was like we all kind of went there and had like like a mission like one thing we really wanted yeah. to do while we were in tokyo so like mine was was fuji for obvious reasons uh uh rob's was uh he wanted to get a watch the, the same watches i was talking about at the one piece tower mm -hmm. of course like they didn't have watches so uh that, yeah. that was rough but he ended up getting like a, a like a one of those pictures a limited edition like one right. piece picture and some cool figures that i think kind of filled that like void um yeah and then yeah and then like nads was disney like she just wanted to do disney that was like her, her one big thing uh mm -hmm. and then of course you know getting engaged i don't think hurt but uh and then you <laughs> had your basashi thing like that was like that yeah was your big you, thing yeah you you you've got your little cute engagement <laughs> mm -hmm. but me i'm eating all the horse in the city <laughs> 
so anyways yeah that night we were like we gotta make this happen before we leave so let's make it happen right now so yeah. we're going we went out and um we he stan had found a basashi place that was like pretty good near us and we went there and they were closed so we were like ah oh, we'll come back tomorrow when they're open um and then yeah we called it quits i think after that for the night and uh just uh went up woke up for the next day and i'm pretty sure that was our that was our last day right yeah yeah, yeah. the last day was the monday yeah, so we got up. I don't really. I don't think we did anything particular that morning, right? Like we just uh, we packed as much as we could. Yeah, we. I mean, basically, it was it was like the Saturday and the Monday were both very like like melancholy. Yeah. Uh, like you said, lethargic kind of days where you're just kind of like, uh, we could like we could feel the trip coming to an end. Like it was like yeah. everything's been kind of, kind of like done. Everything's uh, yeah, just like felt it felt stale in a way. Mm -hmm. in a way it was like all right like i think we were all at that point like ready to go home rob had already been home for a few days which is, was just like crazy to think of that like he was like home in his own bed like uh and he was just on the trip with us like 48 hours earlier like yeah it was kind of crazy to think so it was like man like i think it's time i think we'd all kind of you know had our had our fun accomplished our missions except for you with the with the basashi which was i think yeah. that was the first thing we ended up doing uh we did well, go i to think Sunshine we went City. out and had some sun yeah we went to sunshine city just to we like did an arcade yeah um there's there's a really cool game there that i liked um, that's true yeah we did, yeah. actually we spent like the last remainder of our money on like just shopping in arcades like in sunshine city basically yeah and it was super fun um but definitely as you said there's definitely a, like an over underlying feeling of, of melancholy yeah um between us and uh so then basically the big thing the first big thing we did that night i think was the basashi at like five o'clock yeah um and Basically, it was a whole ordeal to get it because uh, it was definitely like more of a locals' place than it was like yes. people. Oh, you know what else to... we did that day? Oh, between what? between Sunshine City and that, uh, me and you were searching everywhere for like garbage cans and recycling places. Oh, that was the... we had to clean. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh God. Yeah, we had we had we had collected like a ton of water bottles, um, and like big jugs as well. So we had to like, and you had to like get rid of those. And the issue is there, we didn't know we, if we had a garbage room or not. So we like looking for trash cans in Tokyo. And if you don't know, those are incredibly rare yeah. to find. And so we literally are just wandering around with garbage bags. Honestly, probably yeah. more embarrassing than the Donkey Kong suit. Not even in the moment, but like just retrospectively. It might have, yeah, like, it probably looked really like, like we probably looked like scumbags. Yeah. We're just like walking around clearly looking for garbage, like places to stash our like trash yeah we were <laughs> it was funny but we did eventually find out that we did have a garbage room like we yeah like of our we complex, completely passed so. it yeah um but yeah no so our five o'clock rolls around and we we find, we make our way to the basashi place and there's a whole thing to get the basashi but lo and behold we're there the the the, the horse meat brawl is in front of me chopsticks in hand uh i took the first glorious bite Definitely not at all what I was expecting. It was very, it was very, uh, I don't really know what I was expecting because I'm, I just don't have that much experience in the field of like right. crazy food. Well, so also I was just it was like, kind of like awkward too because, uh, they like, they had certain like policies. So there was like a grill in front of us that you would just assume you would like turn it on. Yeah. And then you tried to turn it on and the like lady like ran over and was like, no, 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 raw, raw. Um, yeah, yeah, because I still don't understand that I was supposed to eat it raw. Like, I still thought you were supposed to cook it because there's a lot of places where, like, they had yeah, grills on Yeah, and, well, like, tables. why would they put, why would they put, like, th like, this place literally only served horse meat. Like, they had a giant yeah. horse on their sign and everything. And uh, why would they have that, like, that skillet, like, just on the table, like, yeah, ready exactly. to go, right? So I yeah. was with you, and too. Then... I thought for sure it was like, oh, I guess you're cooking your own food here. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that was not the case. And then also just, like, um, like, they, you know, me and Nad weren't getting anything there. Because we didn't want to risk eating horse like 24 hours before the the flight home, um, just I mean I already have like a motion sickness stuff, so like yeah. that plus, um, uh, you know potentially like a bad stomach would have been just a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was like, all right, like, uh, and then they came over and they were like, what do you want? We were like, oh nothing, like we're we're just here for like him. Uh, and they're like, oh, no, 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 you have to get a drink. And, like, they weren't like, you have to get a water or, like, a pop. It was like, you have to get, like, an you alcoholic have to get... drink. So me yeah. being the only one who, like, even really dabbles in, like, any alcohol. And, again, I'm not a big drinker, but, like, so Nad, Roy, and myself all had to get, like, an alcoholic beverage to, like, literally just eat there, right? Yeah, um, literally and so, just to sit down. Yeah, and so I ended up having to, like, basically, like, have three beers, like. <laughs> it was a, It was a whole ordeal for sure. Um... 
but yeah, no, it was it was it was definitely awkward and just uncomfortable, honestly. Yeah, I really because we were the only ones in there too. Meat. Yeah, and so there's just these two waiters just looking at us while we eat or while, while, while you I eat. eat. Yeah, me and Matt weren't there. even eating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was. I feel like honestly, we we were able to make the most of the situation though, and it was a whole, it was fun. Yeah, and you enjoyed um, it, and it sat it. well, uh, and it, I had like a, it was definitely, I honestly, really, it tasted really good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you um, ate all of it. It was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it just the 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 texture of the raw meat stuck around for a lot longer than I thought it would. Right. But you know, yeah, <laughs> stick. Uh, you know, you can't you can't win them all, but it definitely tasted fantastic. Um. But yeah, uh, and then after that, I feel like we had a whole night, right? Like, we went to Akihabara to have that ramen yeah, again. we went, we um, did one more Akihabara, kind of, like, because I, I needed, at that point, I I had all my souvenirs, and then there were a few more requests, like, just on my phone, like, during the interim, mm -hmm. uh, who were like, oh, can you, like, grab this really small thing? And I was like, I guess, like, I had to get my brother more Kit Kats, and I, I was going to get a, a fridge magnet for a friend of mine. So I was just like, I was like, all right, like, we'll go to, we'll go to Akihabara so you guys can get that ramen you really like. Again, because both Nat and Roy agreed that, like, that vending machine ramen was the best one that they had there. So mm -hmm. they wanted to have, like, their final meal there, which is cool because we could go to the gift shops in Akihabara. I could get, like, the, the souvenirs. Uh, and then, yeah, like, that was that was kind of it. Like, we, we did that. Um, we enjoyed we enjoyed it. Um, you'd had your basashi, and the quest was, mm -hmm. like, complete. And with that, we were, like, and at that point, too, that final day, um, like, me and Natty were, like, we were really out of money like we were between both of us like we had both shown up with like you know a, a nice chunk of change and by that point like we were pooling our money together and i think we had like 70 70 dollars all together um mm -hmm. and that was like before we got to akihabara because we stupidly we were like let's spend all our change in like the arcade and i was like i'll buy two t-shirts and yeah in hindsight maybe not the smartest thing because at one point like i think i think you had to like buy something for us at some point yeah in, in the airport uh, the uh, next day. It, yeah, something. I don't really remember the exact details. But, the airport's blurry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was um, it was definitely a, a, a somber last day, of course, because any trip, uh, the last day yeah. is usually always somber. But I, I feel it. like the day itself really wasn't, like, it It was melancholy, but then I feel like it did pick up after, like, all the Basashi stuff and the uh, mm -hmm. Daki Haber. And then, yeah, by the time we got back to the apartment, though, I think, like, the writing was on the wall. It was, like, very yeah, clear. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. That. Like when we were back, it was just definitely like this weird, like this uh, ubiquitous it. sorrow with all of us. If that makes sense. Yeah. About man, it's over. Uh, we packed, uh, and then I think we just went to bed and prepared for the next day. And well, you were back. you were up pacing and stuff, and you were you were like really uh, stressed about it, and like packed because your your clothes were still wet because you'd washed them, but the dryer wasn't yeah. working, and you know obviously you had to pack your stuff and. It was a whole thing. Like, and then the next morning, I woke up and, sure. and I'd slept in the final morning, and I woke mm -hmm. up to like you and Nad, like you know, freaking out, trying to trying to dry <laughs> your clothes, and I'm like, just put them in a bag. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The next morning was was definitely like, it was rough because of the fact that it was like our plane didn't leave until seven o'clock, but we were we had to exit our Airbnb at eleven a.m. Yeah. So we had so all this like... downtime to kill, like just, but we couldn't do anything because we had all our luggage. And we had all our, like, important documents, and we didn't want to, you know, risk possibly, yeah. like, leaving those behind. Like, I, it was just, yeah. So and we just had to, like, camp at the airport for hours when we could have been, you know. Yeah, few, and there's always that uneasiness, too, of, like, not, um, like, thinking you forgot something, you know. Yeah. Like, I definitely yeah. still felt that. I, I still kind of feel that in a way. I, I'm pretty sure we have everything, but I still, in my, like, gut, didn't I'm like. Did we leave a hoodie? Did we leave something behind? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Did, like, something fall out? Is it, like, behind... Was it, like, left behind the, you know, the little stool at the at the front mm -hmm. of the uh, shoe, like, area? Like, I don't know. But, so, no, it was definitely. stressed, and... Uh, but we eventually found the shuttle to the airport. Then we had to wait in the airport to wait to go to our gate, <laughs> to wait to get on the plane, yeah. to wait to get on a to bus. To get home, yeah. Like, it, yeah, it's so much waiting that day. And it's, like, waiting you want to sleep during wait. it, but you literally can't because if, like, one thing changes or something, like... You never know, right? So you have to kind of yeah. be alert. Like, if, if anyone's ever done a long, a long trip before, like you know, you know, travel can be an absolute pain. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely melancholy at that point. Um, I was pretty much like actively just playing like Sudoku because I was just like so, like just sick of the waiting at that point. Like yeah. I was stressed but and anxious, but like also really just like bored. Like just 
it's like, man, I could be like doing my waiting on the plane and instead I'm like sitting here in the airport waiting to get into the airport. Like, yeah, um, it was, it was, it was, it was awful. The flight sure. back itself though was pretty good. I have to say. Yeah. Honestly, like it's, it definitely was a lot better than the other one, at least in terms of like time going by. Yeah. Um, it really it did felt, fly like, by. Quicker. Um, I know it was an hour quicker, but it definitely felt more quick than that. Yeah. Um, and I feel like at that point, though, I was just a lot more prepared for that, if that makes sense. Right. Like, a lot more understanding of the mentality you have to be in for flying. Yeah. Because I've done it. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good flight back. We basically got back to your guys' apartment, crashed and all. And then, yes. yeah, this, I just chilled there for, like, two days or so, two or three days. Well, and but we also, our schedules were, like, so messed up again that it was, like, the next morning we all woke up at, like, 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And <laughs> it was, yeah, I was rough. And, like, literally, so, like, the Wednesday was all right. Like, we saw my brother um mm -hmm. like we had some we actually had ramen which is weird because he really wanted ramen because he hadn't been to tokyo so i showed roy like the local ro ramen place uh we grabbed that he hung up some stuff that we got and i gave him some gifts uh some souvenirs uh but yeah me and you like we didn't really, really even like play smash we watched some one piece i uh started sorting through the clips from the camera um and started editing and stuff and mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, we basically, like, we went to bed obviously pretty early. Um, Nad was yeah. visiting her parents that day, which is why she wasn't involved in any of that. But, uh, and then the Thursday, the Thursday was, like, a complete write-off. Like, yeah. Roy and I went to, like, we went to, like, I don't I think, like, Shoppers Drug Mart quick to get, um, to get, like, just food, Water basically, because there was nothing like in the apartment. Yeah. And then, like, we shouldn't have, but we all basically went to bed at, like, 4 p.m. Yeah. And we like, and then you well, and I remember Nat what happened were, was like, like, <laughs> like done. Yeah. So like, I remember waking up that day again at like 4 a.m. You you were able to manage your schedule a little bit better, and so I remember when you guys were going to take your naps at like 4 o'clock. I was like, I'm gonna stay up and just watch Brooklyn Nine Nine because I know that I'll mess up my sleep schedule if I don't. <laughs> I'm better than you guys. I know how discipline works. <sighs> and I fell asleep like five seconds later, and <laughs> the, like, so, so me and Nad woke up at around like. 10 11 i think or at least i did i think she might have woken up a little bit earlier yeah. so like we were screwed because at that point it was like it's not late at night yeah. so now we're like waking up midnight or not midnight but like waking up around that time and then going to bed in the afternoon so it's like it was a whole thing <laughs> yeah it was, bad. it was it was a whole schedule it was the worst it's so it's so crazy to me that like it's so much harder to adjust back than it is to adjust there because i feel like i adjusted in japan relatively fast like right. it was definitely like we definitely had our period of like it's because we had things planned ups. that we had to do yeah. So like we were forced to like wake up like earlier just or like power through the late nights, right? Like yeah. we're here we were basically free like my plan at least that night that Thursday night was like um we'll, you know, me and Nad will like show you around the city a bit. Um I didn't like we'll grab like a not a, a super fancy dinner or anything, but like oh, I was going to like show you Tim Hortons and like I had some mm -hmm. ideas in my head and then like yeah, like literally we all fell asleep before. You guys woke up at like 11. I managed to at least get to like 2.30 or so in, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then I basically woke up. You guys were already like a movie and a half done. Um, yeah. And you were out here in like the main living room area. I was in like my bedroom. And then I'm like, all right, well, if you can't beat him, join him. So like I came out here and then I started editing um, yeah. in the back in, in the background because my PC is like, you know, in the same area. It's, it's a very small apartment. Um, so I'm like editing, you guys are watching Wedding Crashers, and then, and then, but the problem was, so then I wanted to keep editing, um, because now I'm, like, I just had woken up, but you guys had been up since like 11 or so, and now it was like 4 a.m., 4.30, and you guys want to go to bed, so like, you guys are asleep, but you're sleeping in the same, like, room as I'm editing, and like, you know, it, it can be loud and distracting, and it's bright, and the computers and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, so like you said, like, you confided later on that like, you didn't get to sleep at all, like, basically. Yeah. Um, and then I eventually, so um, around, I want to say, like, 7.38, I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to bed. So then I went back to bed, got, like, two or three hours of sleep. Uh, and then we met up with my friend Waleed, grabbed uh, some Mexican food. And it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it was tasty. Um, but that, that day was gross. Like, the weather, especially oh. having, like, had been in Tokyo. Oh. Where it was like actually pretty nice. The most rain we got was a drizzle, and then we come back in Toronto just oh yeah. That day literally it, it was, was it was raining and horizontally. The rain was, it was like icy, 
and it was windy it was yeah. cold it was ugh, it was like the worst type of every type of weather you could have yeah it was it was awful and we're like we're trying to like i wanted to show you tim horton so we like stopped i grabbed donuts um you uh you were like you had to carry because you had gloves on and i didn't and like i we got like hot chocolates i got one for nad you grabbed one and then i couldn't even carry nad's hot chocolate and she'd already <laughs> ran off ahead because she was like I'm, i yeah. can't i can't wait for you guys at tim horton's like i need to go home now like i'm freezing um, cause mm -hmm. she didn't wear the right shoes, which was really not smart. But, um, again, she, she assumed it'd be like Tokyo, I guess. But yeah, yeah. so you got to experience the, the, the cold, harsh Canadian, uh, winter a little earlier than most people, but you did. Yeah. Uh, and then you dropped a bombshell on us that you actually had a day, day earlier flight. Yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole conundrum about like, I thought I was leaving Saturday and then, I just mentally put off like checking in for the flight and everything until like the last hour and then I was checking my emails and checking up um, on some my Nintendo news that I'm subscribed to because I'm a nerd yeah. and I saw a United being like hey check in now and I'm like now no tomorrow and then I realized that I was flying out within within like a few hours yeah well or at least I need to be at the airport within a few hours the flight was until like later that night and so that was a whole ordeal as well getting back to the apartment, finishing our hot chocolate, and having to deal with, you know, that being basically the real end of the trip, at least for me. Yeah. Um, and then ran to the train station, said our very quick goodbyes, because the train was, like, chugging away. Yeah, it, it felt like <laughs> there was, like, a two-hour span there where it was, like, by the, like, you dropped the knowledge on us, and then it was, like, everything happened so fast after that. It was, like, yeah. we had to rush to, like, the, we showed up the streetcar, and the streetcar showed up right away. Of course, it was still freezing and raining out. Um, we, you know, we got to Union and then we had to like, you know, rush to the, the station and then we got to the station and like the train was literally about to pull out. So you had to like grab your ticket and run on the train. So we couldn't even say like a proper goodbye, which like really sucked. Um, yeah. it was like, I, I explained it to you that day. It was like, it's like thinking that you're coming back from like summer vacation. Um, and you have like, you, you think in your head, you have that Monday off that like Labor Day Monday off. Um, mm -hmm. and then the Sunday comes around and you're like, oh, it's all good. Like, you know, the, the tension of like, you know, you have to go back is a little bit like subsided because you're just like, well, I got one more day. I don't have to worry about it. I can put it off one more day. And then like, imagine finding out that, you know, like it's like that night you've stayed up super late, uh, yeah. you're exhausted. And then it's like, you find out like, oh no, you actually have to go back to school tomorrow. It was like that feeling. It's like reality set in so like harshly. Um, and like, I felt like especially bad for like Roy because you know, we were supposed to show him the city and really, like, you know, give him a, a good taste of Canada. And because of the, the jet lag, like, that Thursday was a complete write-off. Like, I feel like I yeah. didn't even really, like, talk to you, like, at all on Thursday. I was, like, sleeping <laughs> or editing, basically. We, we went to the mall. We got a picture of me by a reindeer. Yeah, but, I yeah. know, I know. But I, no. you know what I mean, though. Like, yeah, no, had, no, yeah, had I known, sure. like, what was going to happen and, like, you leaving that early, I think, like, we definitely would have made an effort to stay up and, like, actually power yeah. through it and stuff. But... Uh, alas, it didn't work out, and that's all good, I guess. But yeah, so you uh, you got your taste of Canada, and then you were you're going home. Yeah, I was I was I was home home free to work on the DK review, and, and the then trip put was that over. out like a week later, and the trip was basically over there. Yeah. yeah, um, it was definitely it was definitely an amazing trip, all in all. Not really any any uh, like downs on it, like not not many cons to the pros. Yeah, um, I mean, I think they like, are there. It, it's just like I don't ever think that there will ever be another trip that like lives up to that. Just just in the sheer scope of like monumental occasions that all like coalesced in that like one time frame. It was like mm -hmm. meeting you for the first time, getting to hang out with Rob, who like because of where I live now in the city, like I don't get to see him that much. So it was like a really good like I haven't gotten to spend that much time with Rob even since probably like 2014. Like. I get to see him maybe like once in a while for like a few hours out of a day, but not like that where I like get to hang out with him like all the time, experience these cool things together. Cause you just get older, right? So like, mm -hmm. I got to I got to you know re re spark you know my friendship with him um, on that trip. I got to of course like forge a, a new real life friendship with yourself. Uh, I got engaged mm -hmm. to the love of my life. Like it just there were so many of these like crazy moments that kind of like um, you know overlapped and it just. I don't know if there will ever, ever be another trip where, like, it's just that big. It's just, like, that momentous, I guess. Um, and, of course, like, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? Like, 
Because yeah. everyone's cranky, everyone's hungry, everyone's tired usually uh, at the beginning and the end, and then even like adjusting. Like there, there is of course a sweet spot, but like um, you know, and and living living with like people as well who have like diff like you know, there are four people all with different personalities. Some days, some people will be crankier than others. Some days, like some people, like you know, you're trying you're trying. It's a balancing act. Um, yeah. But the fact remains, overall, I think it was like a really just yeah like just incredible incredible trip and uh, i'm yeah. really really happy that um you you know you got to come on it and it all worked out in like the most amazing way yeah no for sure and i'm very gracious that i was able to you know go and with you and hang out and everything from you inviting me and everything yeah but uh, yeah no it was it was fantastic i think you sum it up greatly in in your iphone video you shot of, of us at the airport saying it's the trip of a lifetime um and uh it was it was fantastic I'll never forget it. It was fantastic. <laughs> um, unless I get dementia when I'm older. But then, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Any any last things you want to talk about or bring up? or? Uh, I mean, nothing nothing in particular. Just, like, uh, I look forward to seeing you at the eventual wedding. Um, oh, right. In, in Canada. So that's the next time we'll probably see each other in person. Would be 2020, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it was great. It was great getting to know, like, the real you behind, you know, the camera, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like you're definitely, you're you're almost the exact same person, I would say. Like I definitely think that, yeah, in some instances, like I said, like the, the Disney trip, um, like your youth shines through a little more. Um, but realistically, I think overall, like definitely the person that I met online with like, you know, the enormous heart and just, uh, you know, you, you are that same person in real life. And, and that was... Uh, really nice to see because you know you could have murdered me in my sleep like <laughs> you have you have the hands yeah. for it i have i have the height i have the the, the towering build of <laughs> a six six five american man but yeah but yeah no. no it was definitely definitely the same same with you i feel like it's more i feel like for in both scenarios it's definitely a lot of like you're more there's like just more more of that if that makes sense like it's more of whatever you are online if that makes sense like, right yeah like i feel like i'm more of what i am and then that brings to it extra factors. So it's like a whole multi-layered thing, but like it's all definitely comes from that same place you are online, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think I also I like... probably was more of an angsty uh, stress case than you probably intended as well. Um, mm -hmm. but well, travel, like, if you, especially if you're like the one who's taking charge of everything, yeah. does tend to do that. It was a stressful so. trip. Like, again, incredible, but like there was a lot of stresses that came with it, especially essentially being like, you know, I was the 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 guy like it, it was like i formulated the trip i booked a lot of like the events i you know so there's a lot that i had to like manage and like take charge of mm -hmm. and then also i i do have a, a bad tendency as well to be very much like um i don't know like just excuse me i want other people to be like self-sufficient i guess like mm -hmm. I, i'm very much of like a you know teach a man to fish kind of principle i guess <laughs> yeah it, and, and so like I think there, there's a time and place for that, and there are certain times where, you know, I probably shouldn't have been that way in the trip. Like, mm -hmm. me and me and Nad would, like, got in fights uh, over, like, subway stuff, because, anyway, there, there, there was, like, there, there was definitely some some edginess on my part, for sure. But uh, overall, yeah. though, I, I really, it really was a pleasure to uh, yeah. to hang out and, and get to share my home and, and my culture, and um, as well as kind of, like, be... A guest facilitator for for Tokyo itself as well. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was, it all added up. It all culminated. It was a it was it was a peak, um, that definitely happened, and it was it was fantastic every step of the way. There was stress, but I feel like in in the in the shadow that's cast by the the amazingness of the trip, it doesn't really matter. So. Yeah. No, um, I, I think yeah. you're right, and I think it'll age really well through the trip. Like, oh, for sure. The more it like like by ne like next Halloween is gonna just absolutely pale in comparison. Um, you know, like, just things like that. Like, it, you won't even realize yeah. it until it's like, oh, I remember, like, I can't believe that was three months ago. I can't remember, like, we did this. Oh, like, I, like, oh, like, you'll have ramen and you're like, well, this can't compare to, anyway, just stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm already having ramen withdrawal <laughs> with not being able to find it. And I'm only a week out, so I need, I need all the strength I can get. You but yeah, no. It. So what's next? It was right? fantastic. Um, for the channel? Yeah. Oh geez, um, I'm definitely honestly I'm thinking about dabbling in whatever I feel like making. So there's gonna be some weird, interesting new content coming out in the next few months um, until I find my footing again. Because I'm definitely done with reviewing stuff for a while. Maybe I'll make one or two more in 2018, but then I'm done. Um, 
But yeah, so that's basically it for me, and this video is probably the last of the, like, Japan stuff to be on the channel at all, because this is, like, the big thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know you're making a very cool video, um, like a home video thing that you've been working on. Yeah. Since you were doing it in the trip, of course, but you definitely, you've had a vision for it. Yes. Um, and seeing it come together definitely shows that you, it's going to be very cool. It's going to be very cinematic, very interesting. Um, I hope and so. you're making that soon. That's coming out soon sometime. Yeah, I don't have a, a tentative date for it, obviously, with the release of uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and then Smash Bros. coming up soon, my priorities have shifted, and then, of course, also, like, I was really trying to, like, get as much done on it uh, before I went back to work, because now I'm back to work, and I'm, it's because we're getting into December, and that's, like, busy time. Uh, it's very, very uh, trying, I guess. Like, like, like work's really good, but there's a, there's a lot to do. Um, so, yeah. between those things, I, I don't have as much time as I would probably like. Uh, like, this weekend, I was unfortunately not able to really edit it at all uh, and get mm -hmm. any further on it, and it's just, yeah, it, it's hard to find all the time, but it will yeah, eventually come out. and also, if you're editing at your work, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to come home and then edit. Yes, yeah, no, it's true, it's true. It, it is very difficult to, like, edit and then come home and be like, I'm going to edit for, like, four hours. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. It, it is tricky. And then, of course, in the background, too, I still have my Black and White 2 review that I'm, like, kind of working on, so... It's a lot on my plate, and I'm just trying to, uh, I would like to aim to get the vlog home movie thing out before December 1st. That's kind of my goal, tentatively, mm -hmm. but, I mean, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how yeah. it goes. There's there's a lot coming up. And then, of course, with the holidays soon, too, uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, time that has to be spent just, you know, in, in service of that, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm honestly really excited for 2019. Um... I don't know, like, what's going to happen. I don't know, like, where it's going to take us, but I, I definitely think... Those are the most interesting years, though. <laughs> I feel like after a trip There's like this, I get really reinvigorated, though, creatively. Like, it just, it makes yeah. my world feel bigger, but also smaller at the same time. But just, like, I get inspired in, like, in, like, a way that I... It, it's, it's hard to just do when you're in your monotony, in your routine, right? Like, it breaks your routine and lets you kind of gain an awareness of, like how you're like what's going on in life and, and what you mm -hmm. want and etc cetera, etc cetera. um I, I think it's only beneficial to, to travel yeah so oh for sure for sure but yeah so that's that's very exciting and, and uh obviously people should be on the lookout for that video yeah in the next and whenever whenever it pops out it'll be on and, my second uh, yeah. channel oh okay cool yeah all right um but yeah no thank you guys so much for watching i know it's been a, it's been a long video but it was it was it was a great trip. There's so much to pull from. There's so much substance to pull from. Um, uh, thank you for uh, joining me today and also for <laughs> taking me on the trip in the first place. It was fantastic and, as you said, trip of a lifetime. Um, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody, and uh, goodbye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.